Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to not, not a regular episode, just a special episode of the Let's Keep It a Bug podcast. The only podcast that does something different every single stream. Yes. We got special right. guests in the building. I, you know, you know, special guests. I got my guys here with me. Before we, before we get to them, I got my guys here with me, though. Bezos, how you doing today? Doing good, man. Would be better if I didn't get a noise complaint today. They couldn't handle uh, us on stage night, man. It's cool. It really could. Cool, so I got to get closer to the mic today. No screaming today, y'all. Um, but we're here, man. We're, we're here to have we're here to have good conversations. We're still here to pod. We're here, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mad they didn't knock on your door, but you know they called my girl at work, which is crazy. <laughs> they didn't even call me. <laughs> nah, call it calling the girl oh, is yeah. crazy. I will admit that. Call it the girl is crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, Damo, how you doing today, man? Oh man, I'm doing great. You know, keeping it in nifty, having a great day. Ready for this pod, man. I've been at this date circled since it was confirmed. Can't lie to you. That's crazy. Okay. Uh Sage, how you doing today? You know what? As the as the residual non-hooper of the pod, I don't know why today I feel like playing basketball. I don't know. I don't know what's in the air today. Uh, but overall, in general, man, um, feel like I'm accomplishing a lot in 2023. And yet another thing on the bucket list is getting crossed off today. Should be a legendary pod for sure. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing swell myself, but let's not dilly dally. Hell no. Nah. I won't let y'all do it. We've got a special guest. NBA legend in my book. You understand what I'm saying? Oh man, not again! <laughs> He's a bloody legend. No, 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 no. He's a legend, the very least. He's in my top seventy-five all time. Shit, I, 75. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when you when you got rules that they gotta bend the game. Come on, bro. Come on. Two-time All Star. It. You Let's know the one and it. only our homie Roy Herbert's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Roy Herbert. Yeah, boy. I'm on the soundboard. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And thank you for coming, and man. fellow Star Wars enthusiast. That's what. Now nah, nah, that's what. That's what we were talking about. Nah. When you got up, we was like, "No lightsabers." I want you. To, yeah, they seen them in the back. I want you to. I get jumped every single podcast. I try to bring up Star Wars. I don't even bring it up anymore. But that's okay. That's okay. Jump is crazy. Jump, Jump is crazy. Is I have a. I have a Y'all literally stop. No, 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 no. I, I, I do not hate on you while I hate on you. I hate on you. I hate on Star Wars. No one else does. I hate on you for all three of us. Here you go. I'm about to say. It's not for me, man. It's just not for me. Watch you some Andor. Watch you some Andor. It's like, it lives in the Star Wars world, but it's like a spy thriller. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different. Is that a show? Is that a show on Disney Disney Plus? Plus? Yes. Mr. Uh, Disney Plus? I don't have Disney Plus. Hey, nah, you are Mr. Disney. Wait, when did I become Mr. Disney Plus? You advocated for Disney Plus like two months ago. Yeah. What did you do? Am I tripping? Don't we have a No, no, he's Mr. Disney Plus. I'm going to say. Look at that Mandela effect again, man. Oh, here we go. Oh, man, we're making so far. If you're new to this and you want to be true to this, make sure you hit that join button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're on the road. To the end of the year, we want to end it in a bang, a big bang. Yes, yes, yes. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. All that jazz on the YouTube side. Appreciate you guys watching. Listen, before we get into the meat and potatoes, um, you know, I'm a bit of a hooper myself, you know, some would mm. say. Right? Uh, and I take pride in my defense. So because Roy Hibbert is here, I wanted to show him a quick little clip of my defense Ooh, to see if oh. I could get stamped in the defensive game because Wait, we showing clip? yeah yeah you know I I just I just I mean I feel I feel so it's and it's, it's only it's only twenty seven seconds it's only he's not nothing long all right here we go here we go very true oh no way <laughs> you're sick you're a sick man <laughs> oh my god okay. okay but now I want you to know you this know, is. Know. <laughs> Certified Hooper, though, but like, I'm there. That's a good contest. Hey, you contested. You contested. Step back. G- good contest. Hey, okay. Good defense, but just better offense, though. Yeah. You know this... Okay. Huh? Okay. Oh. Good defense. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I just based off of that light footage. That's just light footage. 
What What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the defense? Hey, man, when you you play pickup and stuff, most people just bullshit their way through your know, game. But now, now I, I, I'm going to rock with you on that. I, I want you on my team. We play pickup. I need some I need some oh, dog with you. God I need some dog with you on the perimeter. Oh. Okay. You done boosted the biggest egomaniac <laughs> on the pot. Oh, God damn it, Roy. He's about uh, to hold this over yeah, our head yeah, for the next three years. What? It's over. What do you mean? I mean, I mean I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. They can say that. But um, excuse me, M- Mr. Hibbert, uh, yeah. another, as the actual best hooper on the pod, I'm just out of shape. Uh, most accomplished as well. Uh, I just wanted to say. I just wanted to say, you know, played on the highest level of anybody in here outside of Mr. Hibbert oh. now. Oh, but, you're uh, sick. Just, you know, as a fellow big man, big man enthusiast yeah. myself, I grew up watching, you know, the bigs. And I'm sure in the time you played, you watched a lot of the great bigs. Can you just rate me as a big man? Just, uh, you know. I feel a little oh, you right too there. short. Over the head. <laughs> you oh, too short. Head. Right, right. Back like down. Like turn over oh, no. the left. You ain't showing the right clip. Ooh, that's bully ball. I need a specific Mute it, mute it, mute it. Are you muted? Are you Ooh, I see Easy. you, though, bro. I see you. Uh, another one, another catch and shoot jumper, steady, all net. Just okay, 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 you know, okay. Just, just, just out of ten, just something out of ten. Nothing crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a seven out of ten, though. Seven out of ten. Ooh. Seven out of ten. So wait, what's that. Omar then? What was that defense? Defense? Yeah, the defense. That defense, was, that, that defense was a good. Like, man, I'm pause. Good eight. That was a good eight. Hey, 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 oh, hey. Yeah. hey. Oh, yeah. hey. That's like, that, and that's, that's all we needed. That's street ball, though. That's street ball. That's like, like that's like pick, you know, pick up. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm talking about. Teach that. You just started a war. You just started a war. I'm happy. I'm, I've been stamped. Um, <laughs> listen. You're nasty. <laughs> um, I want to ask them some, some some questions first before we get into. The topical news, because my God, we got to talk about the Pacers. I don't know if that's some normal stuff that they be doing. <laughs> hey, not, not unironically, the I, perfect <laughs> guess for that, right? Don't know if if stealing balls and deflating them. I don't know if that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, it's known for like ball ball situation to play. You know, you know, uh, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Uh, oh man. I talked to my girl. She's from Indiana. Down. That's what she said. That's what she said too. But um, anyway, all right. I'm going to steal this from a Knuckleheads podcast because I love those guys. When you first got to the league, who was yeah. the first person to bust your ass? Oh, let me see. Bro. Shit. Big man. Bro, I'm going to say this, though. I thought I was tall, but, like, Yao Ming is, like, tall, tall, bro. <laughs> like, mm. Hey, bro, I'm playing defense on him. I take one or two, like, bumps off the dribble in the post. I think I'm playing good defense. He just turns and, like, dumps. But, shit. Yow, but I'm going to say this, though. Back in 08, 09, 010, Dwight Howard, he was tough, though, bro. He was he was tough. He was tough to guard. He was running his ass down the court. He was, like, spin lobbing. Uh, 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 he was just this strong for like no reason, so he was tough to guard, though. Okay, okay. Did, did you hold him to like at least 20, 30, 40? I, 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 no, no, I, I had my nights, I did, I had my nights, you know what I'm saying? I had my nights, I did well, and everything like that. So, but he was tough back then, though. Okay, say less, say less. When did you, uh, when did you first get into basketball? Because I see that your parents tried to get you to do some other stuff before basketball ended up being the thing that you go down the path of. Oh, I, I, in third grade, like my mom, my mom from the Caribbean. I have immigrant parents, though. Like they wanted me to do something like, uh, like be something like a doctor, or like they didn't want me playing basketball and stuff. So uh, I had to force them to. But I started playing when I was in third grade. I was tall. I was like two feet taller than everybody else. So I played with the fifth graders. And um, they used to have this rule: if you have, every player has to play like at least one quarter, so I'd always play the first quarter, and my ass be on the bench the next three quarters and stuff like that, though. So, but that's when I was in third grade, though. But you know, got better though. A seven-two doctor. Yeah, uh, seven-two doctor. No, all respect. <laughs> no shot in hell, bro. I, you're fired. <laughs> I'd be like, no, no, yeah. I don't think I will call. Doc, no. what's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so then when did you start to like really, really get good? Um, and I guess feel that like college was an opportunity, not not necessarily the league, but college. Um, I mean, like when I was a freshman in high school, I was I went in six ten, and then like I was like seven two by sophomore year, so. I was getting recruited, but I was, bro, I was, I, I didn't work hard in high school, man. I, I took it easy. I was averaging like 18 points, like 15 rebounds, playing against like bad competition. But then I, I got to Georgetown and I used to get my ass handed to me. And then, you know, the coach told, basically told me, like, if you don't turn your turn around, we're going to have you transfer. You're going to leave. So, like, they gave me a summer to get my act together at Georgetown. And then, like, I worked my ass off from there. And then after that, you know, I took things for granted before that. But after that, I was just like, ain't no players make it to the NBA after having to transfer and sit out a year, you know, back in the early 2000s, you know. So I was just like, I got to make this shit work here. You know, if not, I, I'm going to be like, like, they, like Big John Thompson used to be like, you're going to be the tallest mailman when you leave, you leave Georgetown and shit. So in my mind, I'm just like, nah, fuck that. I got to work my ass off, man. I can't have no nine to five, man. Okay. What would you do to get better? Because I know that uh, Georgetown produces. Well, they at least have a history of producing like great big men, historic big men. I mean, it it, it uh, it's like a lot of just working on like if I'm if I like you know like my man was shooting over like the left shoulder in the post and the clip he showed me, and then after a while like team scout that so my like, all right you know what I gotta be able to shoot over the other shoulder with my you know shoot just as good with my right with my left so I can become unguardable and like in the post at least so like started working on that and then eventually like I was, my ass is fouling too much so I had to learn how to play defense without fouling staying on the court and everything so it was just like man I, I gotta like buckle down not just like go shoot hoops I gotta like you know study this study this because you know um I, I want the team to win and then eventually like you know the team wins and everybody wins everybody will go you know coaches get head coaching jobs uh in college and uh, players go to the NBA or overseas to play make some money so I was just like you know Focus on myself, grow during the off season, during the season, just you know, help the team get better, win as many games, and then everybody will win. This is this is more of a general question, but do you yeah. feel like um, it's harder to make it in the NBA now versus when you were coming up in the game? Because I feel like right now there's more avenues to the league, but you can also argue that the competition is is harder nowadays. Like, what are your thoughts on? So that? I say for myself, um. It would be harder for me to make it to the league because, like, I don't shoot threes. I'm not the quickest. I was more of a back to the basket center. Like my son, he's like the tallest right now. He's six years old. If he wants to play basketball, I want him doing whatever Kevin Durant's doing and whatever Wembe's doing. You know, because I don't want those old school center, you know, type stuff. You know, so uh, I want him doing drills with everybody else. So I feel like guys now, you know, a center like myself would have a hard time, you know, making it to the NBA out of college. Like this big kid, uh, Zach Eady, he's like seven five for Purdue. For Purdue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I have, you know, he's going to be probably back to back, you know, uh, uh, um, champ, like, you know, whatever the MVP they give out to, you know, uh, and then like, but then time, he probably may not get drafted maybe in the second round, you know, and most of the time back in the day, you were, you were all American, you know, you, you bound to be a first round. So mm-hmm. it's tougher for certain bigs though. He's if y'all never seen Zach play, he is old school, traditional. Oh, like he's yeah. wide. He's, yeah, he's yeah, big. He's good. wide. Yeah. But he's I much rather see Wimby play though, man. I've seen him dunk like from like almost the free throw line on a oop, man. That's like exciting though, man. In the half court, I don't want to see jump hooks all the time, you know. <laughs> what? So if you okay, so if you were, I guess, uh, uh, starting your career over, and I'm talking about from like high school. That's yeah. some stuff you would have worked on. Seeing, oh, I'm seven two. I, I I can't be the guy that got me to the NBA that time. I got to be somebody that's different. I would have to like spend as much time working on like scoring with my left hand, with my right hand, as like being nimble on the perimeter, being able to space the floor, shoot threes. Because when I was in college, they said big men don't shoot threes; they stay in the paint. You know, so like that open. You know, so I'd have to like. You know, spending just as much time like you know creating a different you know craft you know that I'm not you know I'm not used to. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I would have to do that though. I'd have to have a mix of both. Would you even Would you even go to college knowing the opportunities that are out there through like the G League and overtime elite? So I, I'll say this: I wasn't a McDonald's All American. I wasn't so I was like probably in the top 100. I was like 
70 something, 80 something, you know? So like I would have had to go to college, you know, my, I, I was a late bloomer and everything like that. So, um, like I said, I didn't work hard in high school and everything. So I had to, I would have had to go to college, show out in some sort of way, and then, you know, make it deep into the tournament to, to, to at least make it to the NBA or at least be seen because, you know, they got dudes, you know, playing well, winning national championships that, you know, don't even get drafted. So how did how did the opportunity of Georgetown come along if you weren't working hard in uh, high school? How did something like that? So I went to the camps and stuff because I was seven two at like 13, 14 years old. So you go to these Nike That's camps, crazy. you're gonna get seen by these by these college coaches and, and scouts and stuff. So like I got letters, but like once I got like so I, I start with this in high school. I I was fourteen after my freshman year of high school. I was young. My my high school basketball coach actually was the starting point guard for Georgetown from 86 to 90. So where my high school is is in Maryland. Uh he would take he would say, Roy, after high after school, um, drive to Georgetown to go play pickup with the Georgetown players and stuff like that. So I used to go up there every day after high school in spring and get my ass handed to me, like Patrick Ewan, Alonzo, Dikembe. Even Michael Jordan, when he was coming back to the Wizards, would come up there and play pickup. So I'm playing with these dudes, and it was just like, man, this shit is rough, you know. So, um, but I had to like, I don't know, but like, I'm not even sure if I answered the question. Or I may, I may have veered off. No, or something. But, um, shit, my fault. I'll, I'll, I'll let you ask again. No, no, no. I, I was saying, if 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 you didn't work this hard in high school, how does like a program like Georgetown end up being a possibility for you? Oh, just, I mean, just because I was there every day, it, it just like so, so, I was there every day working out the school. I, I verbally committed to Georgetown when I was a sophomore. They were garbage, bro. Like literally, like they were they weren't even making the NIT tournament. So it was just like nobody wanted to go to Georgetown at that time, you know. So it was after Big John Thompson, who won the national championship back in '84 with Patrick Ewan. He had retired, and then like three or four years, another coach was there, and uh, they were in the ground. So I, I committed to them my sophomore year in high school. So I used to go up there every day after school and just work and train with those guys and everything like that. And I honestly say to make it to the NBA, you have to have like the right genetics. You have to be like, like the right height. And then you have to have the work ethic. And then you have to have a little bit of luck though too. Cause um, you know, I happened to go to a school that didn't have a center um, that was playing ahead of me. Nobody was really coming in the year after me looking to go to Georgetown. So I had time to, to develop and not have to like look over my shoulder all the time, you know, that, you know, my, my minutes may, you know, be taken. That makes like sense. All right, let's, let's go back to the league. So you get drafted, you're on the Indiana Pacers. Yeah. You said it was, it was tough those first couple years. Um, what was the hardest part about the transition from like college to, to the pros? Oh man. Like I honestly like the time that you have, because like in high school, Everybody college, says that. you know what? Everybody says that it's the time, yeah. bro. It's like because I like at Georgetown, I have like maybe an eight twenty class, and then I get done by like two thirty. I may have three or four classes that day, and then I go to practice, and that's like Monday through Friday. And then you have practice, but you get drafted to the NBA. You go to the gym, let's say uh, during the summer, the vets aren't really there in Indiana. Like nobody wants to stay in Indiana. They go to Vegas, they go to Miami, New York to go train and stuff like that. You know, so LA. So I'm in Indy. Nobody's there. And then they say, all right, you come in for, you say Monday morning, you have your workout. You get there at like 8 o'clock. You get like treatment, you know, on your body. They make sure they massage you, make sure any injuries you have, they work on it. That's an hour, hour 15. You do, I like to do my weight lifting first before I get on the court. So I lift like an hour and a half. And then let's say, and then after that, chill for a little bit in the locker room and go to my court work. So I'm basically in the gym from like 8, then I leave like probably like 1 o'clock. You know, I'm done. I get my shower. And then I have, like, the rest of the day just to myself. And, like, I'm 21 years old. They just gave me a bunch of money. Uh, you know, I've never made before. I grew up poor as hell, you know. So, you know, and it's like sometimes people can, like, really get in, like, bad situations, you know, um, you know, because they have so much time on their hands, you know. So I happen to be in Indiana where there's nothing really going on. You know, I had I had friends that got drafted to Miami, uh, that, you know, it was telling me about the, the lifestyle out there. And I'm just like, man, like, you know, I, I was just fortunate enough to, to be in Indy where I didn't have any, that many distractions. 
being Can said, I what was the, oh, my fault. Go ahead. I, I was about to say, what was the first big purchase you made yes, after getting time. to the league, like that first one? So I, I would say when, when I was in high school, I used to um, always go to this place in the mall. You guys may be too young for this, like Sharper Image. And I used to sit in this like, massage yeah. chair, bro. And I used to sit in that thing and it'd be rumbling and everything. And they'd always come and ask me, are you going to buy one of these? And, they, and, they, yeah. and I said, no. So they tell me to get up. Bro, before I even got my apartment and everything like that, I went to a sharper image and bought that massage chair. It was an eyesore, bro. But that thing was sitting in my in my apartment for like years. Like I, that was the first thing I bought, though, because it was just like meant something to me that you know I could afford to buy something now, you know. So, you know. So. Mm. Okay, so you're getting into the league. You're starting to play well. The team is becoming better. Yeah. More importantly. Because you, you you got some people on your team when you come there. We're not Indiana's not the best team, but yeah. we're starting to get better. We're starting to perform well. Um, to the point where, you know, we're making some playoff runs. And yeah, really man, deep playoff runs. Deep playoff runs. I mean, it was it was rough to begin with, man. There was like nobody in the arenas. It was like two or three years after the uh the brawl uh in Indiana. So like nobody was coming to the games. So we just had to work, not like uh one thing that's different from like let's say like the Lakers of today, they people want to go play for Indiana. I mean, play for the Lakers, like, but like in teams like Indiana, they have to like draft right and like make sure like they develop their players before you know and keep them there before they go to like places like LA. But uh, but we did a good job of just like working together. We had some good players come through. You know, uh, when we made that run, Tyler Hansbro was like a hell of a hell of a teammate. He was cool as hell. And you know, Lance those are still my boys to the day. Uh, but yeah, we it was it was it was nice of our come up though. And to see some of those players still playing now, uh to see David West, I think he got his championship with go uh Golden State. It was good, it was good, it was good. That's what's up. Uh can I ask? So yeah. during these years where everything starts ticking up, you start playing well, you're making all-star teams, everything like that. When was the first moment I, I know Omar asked who was the first person to bust your ass? When was the first moment you had that like sigh of relief, like you knew you belonged in the league? Like you looked around, you was like, "All right, I I'm really established myself." Well, like you know, uh, I always used to have to play with like a chip on my shoulder, and like I got drafted 17th, I felt slighted, and then like I always said to myself, like I said during the summer, I want to work hard, you know, on myself. It's time to be selfish, and when the team comes, it's time for like the season starts. But, man, when I made that first All-Star game, man, like, I knew it meant a lot to me because I didn't average, like, the most points. I wasn't going crazy. My blocks were, like, you know, like, nice. I had a triple-double off of blocks. So, I, I, when I made that first All-Star game, I felt like, like you know, I felt like I started to feel like I belonged there, you know, because I was always seen as, like, a backup. Uh, that was all the draft reports and stuff like that, man. But when I made that All-Star game, and it, that, that was something, though. And, I, and then, you know, so – and then. It, it, and the confidence just came from there. Wait, I want to, because you mentioned this. You said that y'all were two years from the brawl and people weren't coming to the to the games. You felt like you could still feel the effects of, like, the malice in the palace yeah. in Indiana oh. at the time? That's crazy. Man, you, could, you could hear a pin drop in the arena when uh oh. when we would come out and play, bro. And uh, what at that point, I uh, – I, uh, was working with somebody in the Indiana Pacers because we had saw that this player from the Milwaukee Bucks had like a pseudo um, area just for fans. It felt like a college area, Andrew Bogan. And uh, we said, all right, you know, what? let's let's do something to get people to the game because like um, they didn't – parents, people in Indiana didn't want to bring their kids to a game where like the team had shootouts before at strip clubs. They, they had the brawl. So like – it's predominantly white. Um, Indianapolis is predominantly white, and if the team is is black and you know, happy, you know, but uh, they didn't feel like they wanted to. As messed up as that was, they didn't want to bring their the people to the game, the kids to the game. So that was an issue. So I decided to say I was going to start this group called Area Fifty Five. My number was fifty five, and mm -hmm. I would I would buy fifty five tickets from preseason to regular season and in the post game just for uh, people to come to the games and everything like that. So I did that for like three or four years and everything like that. And the, the crowd just kept growing from there and everything. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. I forgot about the 
The shootouts with Stephen Jackson, wasn't it? Yeah, Stephen Jackson. Yeah, I team, yeah. <laughs> I, as soon as he said it, uh, I knew exactly what team he was talking about. I was like, damn, that did happen too. <laughs> you weren't just a malice. You niggas was tripping. Yeah, 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 I heard some stories. I ain't gonna say no, man, but I heard some stories about them back oh, in the day. Okay, I can understand why the <laughs> the local Indianians, Nap Towns, finest, they don't. Wait a minute. Now, yeah, I don't, I don't. You, you want to go to a what game? Pacers. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you're to <laughs> Pacers. I, 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 story for you. I won't. I won't say who who it was, but uh, so we used to have this equipment manager in Indiana, um, and uh, he had told me the story. He was like an older dude. My my first two years in the league, and he was driving one of the players, um, his Bentley or or, or Rolls Royce or something like that. So he was driving him to this hotel in a real nice hotel. And then all of a sudden, um, this this <laughs> his op showed up, bro. And they did a drive by, and um, and the dude, the the, the the player was in the back seat, I believe so. And then the uh, the equipment manager was in the front. He got shot. He didn't know how to open the doors in the um in the in the Rolls Royce. Somebody had to push a button, so he was sh- looking for it. He got shot through his elbow, bro. And he said that he had to have two casts like this for like. Two three months, just like walk. <laughs> That's the most <laughs> hold bullet. <laughs> he got a collateral. Oh my god! god. That's the most hold bullet I'd I never heard of. Aches. I swear. Oh my god! Oh my I've heard Lord. some wild stories. If you <laughs> don't, <laughs> <hear> <laughs> <that> <laughs> <my> <laughs> one bullet, <laughs> one bullet, <laughs> one bullet two cash. That's crazy. crazy. Got a thing where like staff couldn't hang out with the players outside the arena and stuff like that. After <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I, I, I <laughs> hope. I would hope so. I hope he was a poster <laughs> child for Yeah, guys, we can't uh we can't go. Dave, come up here. Come Yo, up why, here what Dave. happened? Come here. Come here. Come here. This come here, Dave. Why. Yeah, this is this is good job. <laughs> you uh, have to lead this. <laughs> why are your hands like oh, that? Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, can I ask? Can I ask? All right, so we yeah. asked who was the first player to bust you? Who was the first player to either receive a Roy Hibbert special, like just the night you was feeling it, everything was going in, and he just happened to be the guy? Or who was a player that every time you seen that date, you was like, all right, this is where I, this is where I show out? Man, like, I, I'm going I'm to tell, tell you the first one. Like, I, I don't like – I don't – I move past that, so I don't want to, like, start shit with certain people. I won't name names, but there used to be this one player for the Brooklyn Nets, man. He was a dirty – Man, he's played dirty, bro. Ah, he's he he's stealing one of my cards. Like, on the, he was oh, trying man. to grab your nuts and stuff like that. And I'm just like, bro, man, like it was crazy. But I won't say his name because I don't want to give him any attention. But if you if you go on YouTube and search Roy Hibbert fight, uh and, and then uh Roy Hibbert fight, you'll see you see I'll, I'll ask you a question. <laughs> I feel like I know there. exactly who you're talking about. I, I ain't gonna I say names. I got a couple names. I'm gonna right now. I got a I'm name a, or two. I'm, I'm not thinking gonna say about. It, but I'm gonna look it up. Hey, that's funny because we talked about him. Against Golden State. Who's against Golden State? Oh, yep. I I see it. All right. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I see it. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. So you start. The team starts to get better. Um, you know, I saw the attendance numbers. Yeah, he was right. Uh, kind of at the bottoms of the league, but we started to get a little bit better. We started to get yeah. a little bit better. Two interesting players joined the team. I want to know about like a young Paul George, yeah, and seeing him at that stage. And then obviously we got to hear about Lance Stevenson because yeah. he's the, the, the character, the character that's Lance Stevenson. Oh, was man. it planned? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's man. just what I want to know. Was <laughs> it planned for that man to blow in his ear? That was my first question. I didn't know about that till after the game, but like. But like, well, I think about PG when he first came in. They said they like they said they got this young kid coming in. He's like a young. He, the worst he could be is like a, a young Trace McGrady and everything. That that's a, a crazy. Off. That's a crazy expectation. The worst. Is that not right? I mean, like, worst, worst right now, do you feel like he could have achieved that or, or not? Or I, exceed that? No, oh, no, no. Well, uh, the worst he could be is a young Trace McGrady. Oh, actually, I would say so. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah. make sense. But that's a crazy expectation for a young dude. Like, oh yeah, the worst he's gonna be is young Trace McGrady. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I mean, he worked out, but uh, he was always humble, always worked. Um, man, I tell you this story. Good dude. We uh, one day we was having practice, and like, um, they they clean up the arena now. But like we 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 was eating breakfast before practice one day, and Paul, PG and myself, I, like his locker was like right here, and mine was like right here. So we shared a corner. Well, like we we shared a corner, but we had an empty locker like right in between us that was 
uh, and then we like like I had the top uh, with I uh, put my clothes there. Then he had the one with his shoes because he had a shoe deal, so he had tons of shoes all the time. So uh, we had like the locker room was dirty. Like we just had shoes everywhere. And then uh, they said the equipment manager was like, "All right, we get new shoes in. Nike sent a new new shoes for you guys. So can you clean out your your old shoes that you have so we can throw it away or, or donate them to a, to whatever so we could uh, uh, bring in the new shoes and everything like that." So uh, basically, Nike wants you like every ten games to, sh to change shoes and everything like that. So we're cleaning up our locker and um, in, a, in the in, in the empty locker, and then all of a sudden, like we they had these uh these um boxes in the locker room and this box was like beeping red and we're just like what's this right and it's like a little flat and so we start cleaning up man me and pg see this long ass tail it was like a uh uh and everything like that bro we saw the tail we both jumped up into the fucking chair and we're just like hold up it was like a, a rat motel or something like that bro and then the equipment manager a different equipment manager came out and like pulled the rat up and the shit was huge and everything like that but um I don't even know if I have that picture anymore. <laughs> but he was, you know, PG was always good, though. Good dude. Lance, like, he was, uh, you just have to, like, let Lance be Lance sometimes. I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, you got to let him off the, the leash and just let him do his thing. He from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, he just, you know, he just, well, we have, I'd say we had some fun times. He, he was a good so dude. So, was it playing? Hard-headed sometimes, but, uh. But no, he 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 had some dog in him though, man. And we had, our team had some dogs with us. I hate to be the uh, Debbie Downer of the group, man. But one of my one of my questions that I don't want to forget: you push that you push that Heat team that everybody loves talking about seven games twice. There yeah. was one game that you feel you get that back. It's <laughs> over with. The Pacers get a championship. What game do you think it is? Yeah, it was, it was the game six where the coach took me out, and then uh, I think LeBron I drove. Drove, yeah, man. That was the one thing that frustrated me the most was that uh, coaches just feel like if you're a big guy at the end of the game, they got to take you out because, you know, you're a liability. But I'm just like the whole game I've been, you know, doing what I was supposed to do. But, you know, it's hard to look back and not want to change that. But, um, but yeah, that one, that one, that one hurt. I kind of, I kind of saw that coming though. You know, LeBron is like the smartest, you know, player, one of the smartest players in the NBA. And he sees the lane doesn't have a defender there. He's just gonna go, you know, drive right in, though, man. But uh, no, no explanation. That's just what it was. It was just always like that at the end of the games. You know, it's just like they want they they, they think that Chris Bosh is gonna be in the corner. So I I'm gonna think I'm gonna come help on LeBron. He's gonna throw it to Chris that was hitting threes and stuff. So that was always the thing, man. But, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Popovich did that to uh, Tim Duncan too. Game six. Yeah. It was just like the norm that they did with like bigs. You know, it was just that's why I don't want my son or any of my, my dogs who play basketball not to be pigeonholed as like a a, a a center. You know, so because it just sometimes it just sucks to be a center sometimes nowadays. Mm. You know, you just run the court and setting screens. I think I think today it might be a little bit different, especially with like uh like Chet Wimby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. they're they're at least changing it, and we're getting away from the. Well, I mean, he's still in the league. He's still he's still dominating, doing good. But the Rudy Gobert's aren't seen so much around the league anymore. Yeah, like, like the yeah. Rudy, like check the skilled, the offensively skilled players. Like I feel that uh, I might be on a tangent, but like people always talk about what's the what's the name of the big kid from uh, Phoenix Suns? He was just on the Magic, and then he yeah. went to the University of Oregon. Um, Next time with Bo Bo. Bo Bo, I feel oh, that oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. He will always be able to get a roster spot because he has the ability to like he may not play, but like he has the ability to, like, to shoot the shot, you know, and everything like that. And like as you get older, look, like, Taj Gibson just was sitting out for like I'm not sure however long, you know, because you know he just got back in the NBA. So I feel like even if you don't play, but if you have those skill skills like Chet and Bo Bo and stuff like that, you'll have a lot more longevity. So in that. In that same time span that Sage was talking about, you get attributed, and they call it the I don't I don't know why like the internet is dubbed at this thing, yeah. but they call it the Roy Hibbert rule. They that you know the the memo the verticality. about verticality yeah. and and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you can you touch on that? Do you think you were, I guess I don't want to say unfairly scrutinized, but do you think that the NBA was essentially tripping to send that memo out? 
No, I, I mean, I liked it because it, it solidified, like, what I was doing. Because uh, when I first got in the NBA, I was averaging so many fouls. Like, like I, I would have, like, I play against, like I said, let's say Orlando Magic in 08, 09. Jameer Nelson, uh, you know, uh, we just scored. Jameer Nelson dribbling on the court. I have to run down because Dwight Howard is uh, about to post up. Jameer Nelson dribbles in front of me and, and, and stops and falls. And then I get a foul. All right, now, you know, now at the same time, they – Say pay, uh, somebody drives to the basket and they jump into me. I'm trying to block a shot. That's uh, another foul. Oop, that's two fouls. I'm on the bench. And then my coaches were just saying, Roy, when you on the, the analytics say when you're on the court, we do better. We got to figure out a way to keep you on the court and, and everything like that. So I worked on um, verticality because uh, if I my philosophy, if you don't mind me going into, it, is like if somebody is driving toward the rim, I say if they if they lay it up to you, they lay it up like this, then you can go block it. But if they cuff it, and then you know you can't go block it because that's when you're gonna get you know they're gonna, and then you know get the 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 foul and, uh, and everything mm-hmm. like that. So I had to work on you know uh, moving from jumping. My, get to my spot and, and jumping straight up and not jumping from A to B. And if I jump straight up and take the contact on the chest, um, it's going to be a no call. Or if work and the best thing, like I get hit, I may block the shot on the way down because I my you know because of my core getting hit, I cut my hands come down. So it was actually good for me. And I see everybody up until I mean I'm a CBS commentator now. I see kids in college right now doing it as well. And then, you know, so for me it was just like you know vertical. I was missing. Mr. Verticality or whatever like that, you know. So um, I was uh, – I, I don't toot my own horn, but I was get, I was supposed to be on the – there was a FI cover I did a shoot for where I'm, like, holding the rim. And because of my defense, I was blocking shots, the verticality. I was supposed to get the cover of that SI. But the NFL player that came out and came out as gay, uh, he got – he bumped my, my <laughs> the cover, you know, Same. and everything like that. Um, How to do it. Yeah, so no, I was, you know, but that was just something. But like, I, I didn't mind it though. I, I, it was something. I had like, when I was a kid, I always said I was, I want to be remembered for something. And uh, you know, I'm not going to be top 75. I'm not going to have my jersey retired, you know, in, in Indiana or anything like that. But for me, a little bit of something called like the verticality rule, you know, based off of something I did, I feel like honored to like, you know, uh, leave a little bit of myself on the game in some way. Mm-hmm. But that's why that's why I said legend because most people don't. I mean, they can't hang their their hat on that. And for the life of me, especially as like a younger dude, yeah. I really couldn't understand it. I was I was because for I have my thoughts about D Wade at that time and how he yeah. was playing and stuff like that. But Tough. I was like, yo, yeah. he is just standing straight up and down. Why can't people figure this out? <laughs> but understanding what it is to this day, I'm like, nah, nah, he's. This is really making an impact on the game and how these players play because um, how he's defending the rim is crazy. Can I tell you a story real quick? Okay. I, um, so I was playing – let me tell you a player who fitted this – like there was – hold on, I'll tell you this. Um, D. Rose was one of the players that could like – we prime D. Rose in, in, in Chicago. He could take the hit and then like still – like finish like bro like he was he always had my number when he came to the rim prime D Rose, but yeah. I was playing in uh, against the Lakers and um, and uh, and like I think Kobe spun baseline with somebody and he motherfucker figured it out. So I I get to my spot I watch film I know where Kobe's like launching pad is and everything like that. So I know that you know he he he's not gonna come if he comes to try to dunk it. He's not going to finish it. He's getting older at the time and everything like that. So I'm anticipating him trying to, like, you know, uh, I'm going to jump straight up. He pump fakes. He gives me the best pump fake I've ever seen, bro. And then, like, he comes. I come. So I go up. I'm expecting him to go up. He, on the way down, he jumps into me and everything like that, right? And then, um, and then like, I, I get called for the foul. So, like, on the way up, I'm good. On the way down, you, 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 you fuck. And um, basically, so the timeout comes, and like I walk to the bench, and then uh, uh, the G Hill is like, "You're looking at me, like, big dog. What the fuck's wrong with your nose?" And then I feel it. My fucking Kobe broke my nose with his oh like, my God. elbow. Oh Fucked <laughs> up, bro. So I had to like wear a mask. I had to get surgery the next day. I had to, to reset it. 
And that year I made the all-star game in Orlando. So I see Cole walking down the hallway and we're like about to cross paths. I was like, yo, bro, like, you had to break my nose. Like I told him what happened. He was like, he's like, what happened? So I explained the play. He was like, he looked me up and he was like, then get the fuck out the way then. And then he just like <laughs> walked. <laughs> God damn it, Kobe. <laughs> I was like, God, it's like a you problem, man. Oh, like, he's not your God. God damn it, Kobe. Get out the way. That's but a Kobe Kobe. Kobe. I, you know, I spent a year with Kobe, bro. Like that, like, I'm not going to be like I was his best friend. I got to know him. He was right. like a hard nosed dude, bro. He wanted to win every argument. But, bro, but he, he hardly practiced because he was the end of his career last year. Yeah. But every time he practiced, looked like the level of intensity just like rose in the locker room. He, he was just cussing out um, anybody he could, you know. Shit, man, he he was something else though, bro. It was he was like a rock star when he was. Nah, you know, I was gonna I was gonna ask him about that. But go ahead, Damo. I was gonna say, um, as a Laker fan, and I, I want to tout you as one of the few Laker centers we had during the rebuilding years that I didn't absolutely hate. Could play some damn um, defense. Hey, like, oh, my God, bro. Robert Sacre, man. Them Robert Sacre. Damn yeah, Robert Sacre. Timothy Martin, bro. I'm telling you. Bro, my, I thank you. I, I still got the clip of me going to the Nets game and for a whole quarter telling Mozgov he's trash, like, right behind the bench. Like, I still got it. So you were one of the few Laker centers I, I, I did not absolutely hate during the rebuild years. Loved it. Um, Is there something, like, actually something can you feel – in the difference in playing in LA, because I have a, oh. I, like, can you really, can you explain that? Because pe- when I say it, people just, oh, everyone says it. Can you actually explain Play, playing for LA or playing in the Staples or whatever it's called? The um, I would say four. Yeah. I would say four. four, four. Uh, playing four, for LA, yeah. Four, man, four is something different, man. Because I would say, I would say before going to play in LA was always great. You see the stars, it's nice and warm in there, great. But when you play, when you start, when you play at the at, at, at you go in there for one night or whatever like that is is fine. You play for the Lakers, bro. It is pressure. It is mm-hmm. pressure, like to win, and like, bro, like the media don't care, and like, you know, I mean, Cole, you know, it was his last year, and like, you know, so he didn't practice, so it was hard to like really get a rhythm because basically, basically, he went um, it's Cole, like you know, he's it's his last year, he's taking all the shots, you know, so like. And then some of the guys, you know, weren't trying to play – not to say trying to play defense, but, bro, the pressure on you is just tough because you have Kobe there because he's a presence. And then, like, you know, you have the, the fans are expecting greatness, man, like the story franchise. And, man, that shit – I was depressed after that year, man. We, we were, like, so bad. Like, I was just like, man, I, it made me question if I could play basketball again. This It's like the pressure. And I honestly say, like, L.A. is not built for everybody. Like Kobe said that to um, – he told me a story about what he actually said to Dwight and stuff like that. But basically, like, it's not – you know, it's a different animal, you know, playing for the expectations and everything, you know. Magic Johnson is, like, oh, like in the locker room, like, in the hallways, you know. And, like, he has no problem saying, y'all motherfuckers don't run back on defense. Y'all don't do this, that, and the other, you know. You got I, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is there, you know. Like, Shaq – I see Shaq and stuff. So, it's just like, man, it's it's definitely tough. And um, and, and at least y'all got that bubble championship, though, you know? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Roy, Roy, <laughs> Roy, what do you mean by that? Here we go. What, what do you Did mean? it I mean, count? Y'all got one. You count it? You count it? I mean, I didn't play that year, but at the same time, like, I, I talked to several players, and um, I will say this, though. From a player, a reliable player, and the, he said that – uh. They spent so much time in Disney, the players. Like, they would go on the rides. They would go golfing. But after this, a month and a half of doing the same thing, they, got they were going crazy. Yeah. And then, like, this player told me, once LeBron heard that all those guys were, like, you know, not wanting to be there, he was, like, they said, like, he got every all the Lakers in line. Like, we got to take advantage of this, though. Like, for me, that's just, like, taking the space, though, man. Nobody else wanted to be there. They all want to leave. They didn't care. That's but LeBron so Mickey, was like, no, I don't know. We locked in. Like I want to be man. Yes. Hey, so is you call it Mickey? I call it a, a god that's hungry to I win. I call it killer mentality. <laughs> right. I call it a mentality. I call it a mentality. I want you to take it from me. Bro, I do want to ask you this to put a pin yeah. on it. If you had to say, was it an easier or harder environment to play in the bubble? Just based off of what you've heard from other players, would you say it was an easier environment or was it harder at the end of the day? 
Because I've heard arguments for both sides. Because people have said like it feels like they're playing in the open gym. On the other side of the thing, like the mental, the mental, of it that mental stuff is tough. But like to play with no fans in the arena, in the arena, like I understand it's like a, it felt like a scrimmage, and they had the TV screens of people there. So I would say it would be tough, mentally tough. But to me, I would, to me, I probably would. I, I tried to emulate like. Uh, Tim Duncan, and he's probably like the strong styling type, you know. So I probably would have just sucked it up and like not. I would have like probably just you know got try to get the shit done, you know, because that's the that's who I want to be, you know. So I'm not sure. I, I think it would be tough. So, um, this is crazy. You alluded to it. I gotta go back. I gotta spin the block. You don't have to tell the whole story if you don't want to. Yeah. You said that Kobe told you what he said to Dwight. What did What did he? What did he say? What it was the conversation? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I ain't going to say that. Was it, wait, let me say this, because you because oh, yeah. th- you talked about it in, in the same regards of, like, understanding what it means, essentially, to be a Laker. So I'm yeah. assuming that it was kind of along those same lines of, like, yo, this, is, this isn't... this Yeah. No it's disrespect. Like, this ain't the Hornets, you know? I mean, no, yeah. I, basically, basically, basically. I mean, some other stuff happened, too. But, like, that's what I'm not getting into. But it was basically what you're saying. Like, you know, you, this is a joke to you. You know, you're taking this as a joke, you know. So so I think that was, like, the biggest thing. Because I think he was, you know, yeah. So I'll, I'll ask to make a more vanilla question here. Um, you've played for the Lakers. You know how that fan base can be. You've also talked about playing for Indiana where a pen could drop in. Nobody could hear it. Um, what team were you thankful that you did not play for? Like, what is the worst possible fan base situation that could have been for Roy Hibbert? And thank God it didn't happen. Well, he coaching Philly now. They say Philly is tough too. Hmm? I mean, yeah, Philly is tough with Joel there. I would say this. I'm happy. Hey, go to Oklahoma. Like, I feel like living in Oklahoma would be tough. You know. <laughs> I feel like that would we do be forget tough. the living aspect all the time. <laughs> like playing, like oh, playing. I guess Oklahoma, like the arena, like they go crazy. They don't sit down until the first bucket. So like that place is always crazy. In there, like they 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 jam out because there's nothing else professional sports there. So, but to play in Oklahoma to me, that'd be like uh, I hope nobody hears from Oklahoma. <laughs> 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 Well, we're not. That'll probably that'll probably be that'll be that'd be like the worst the worst case situation though because you know you got a family though you know like want some diversity you know and everything. I, like I hear it. I, I hear okay. It. Yeah, I understand that. No too. other words needed, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Out of um all the cities that you can go to, like typ- typical regular season schedule, what are the top three cities that you are like excited for? Okay, we're going to this city this week, bro. So I would say L.A., Miami. New York. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, but, like, a lot of guys, like, Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, too, because of the, you know, the like, the guys that don't play, who just have to show up, you know, like, the not the not the, the bench guys, but, like, the guys that don't even suit up. Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, they be there. Toronto, they love the city. They mm-hmm. love the city. But I'd say whenever we go to Miami, New York, or L.A., we on the bus, uh, on the plane, you know, guys, we're going, we going to a nice dinner. Let's go to dinner. And then we tell somebody on the team, and then they'll make a reservation for us. And then we, like, bro, like, like the you go, you go to a city, and you go as a team, they fucking, like, take care of you, bro, like the, the staff. So that was always nice to eat and conversate with my teammates. We had no phone policy. Everybody put their phones in the, in the hat. And then, we, you know, we just still ch- uh, chat and everything like that, you know. So those cities had the best food because, like I said, we live in Indiana and there's, like, you know, no no offense to Dairy Queens and stuff, you know. But, like, there's not that many options, you know, as opposed to, like, those other cities. I love yeah. Dairy Queens. I, lo- you know, I love their buildings and everything. I'm going to have my girlfriend watch this because she's from Indiana. She, she's like, I hate this. <laughs> Whoa, not, too much, Dairy Queen. Whoa. Not, not too much on Dairy Queen. Too much on the triple swirl. All right. Bro. She's, um... <laughs> I mean, she's from Indianapolis. She's from oh, Indianapolis. Yeah. Went to went to Purdue. Um, yeah, you know, she she nap oh, town yeah. till she dies. She's like uh, Jeff T. I, for real. I, I stayed in <laughs> South Bend for a, a, a extended period of time too. So I was working in Notre Dame. So I know for oh, a fact, yeah. and it's not nothing much to do up there. But I go to Dairy Queen. Yeah. I, I know the feeling. Man, like the biggest thing in Indianapolis was the Indy Five Hundred, bro. And like I would, they they'd make us go, and after the second or third lap, I'd be like, bro, like it might be time to go, man. I, I don't know about this, man. Like <laughs> I everybody come out all over the world just to watch five hundred laps of it. Oh. 
So, so last last playing quick question. Um, watch, I've watched a lot of the Lakers from this specific teams. Uh, uh, interviews and stuff like that. And they always attribute that year as like a a weird year. Which Um, one? This year? The the Kobe's retirement year, that last year, the 15, 16 year. Um, They always attribute it as like, it's just different because, you know, Kobe was retiring. Things were just a little bit different. Um, And shout out to Lou Will. I I actually listened to him on uh, Paul George's podcast. He, He actually shouted you out. But he he talked about that year and the practice, the the practice. I think we all know what practice we're talking about. But talk talk about just not only that year, but the practice specifically. I want to know from your perspective, the y'all soft as Charmin. Man, look, I was that was I think a year or two before I got to with Jeremy Lin was there. But like the same type of atmosphere was there when he would come. Like like bro, like um, I'd say this. Like I said, Kobe didn't practice with us most of the time. So we had this coach, uh, B. Scott, Byron Scott. You know, he was yeah. the Showtime Lakers. He used to run us to death, bro, on game days. At I thought y'all world. didn't run as it. I thought they didn't run in the NBA. Bro, he had us doing three-man weave up and back. That's to Everybody to goes Riley twice. So bad. Three-man weave up and, up and back to six to eight to ten. This is on game days, bro. We used to be so tired. Kobe had fresh legs because he would just show up to the games, you know, so he wouldn't practice with us, you know. So, That's crazy. And, um, Big Kobe. Yeah, big bro. I don't mind, you know, bro. Like it is cold. Be like, no, bro. He had his he he had his own locker room. He had the L.A. Kings locker room. So like, we would have our locker room, and then like he would have like it'll be a tunnel. You remember that thing about the uh, the Clippers and whoever the the Lakers or whoever who was the fight? Was the like, hallway. Yeah, they went to yep. go fight. Yeah, yeah, the Rockets. Uh-huh. So that's the hallway. Kobe would walk through to, to to his locker room and everything like that. You know, so he would use the L.A. Kings locker room. So, uh, but but it, I mean, it, it was it was definitely tough. Um, there was cameras there everywhere. Like in Indiana, uh, Larry Bird, we had a chance to do like a hard knocks type of thing for us. Uh, but Larry Bird was like, no, nah, like he's like, we just want the guy to focus. So I had never seen like like Kobe had a documentary crew with them there the whole time. So um, I to bring it up, but like you know, there was some stuff that I mean, God rest his soul. But he caught some stuff. Um, in the locker room, like when there was a, it's documented. I love the dude, um, D'Angelo, but like he caught like that. He that camera crew had some stuff that ha- like that caught some interactions, um, you know, with the the D'Angelo Russell and uh, Nick Young situation and everything. Mm. Like that. So that was like a weird year too, you know. That that thing that thing made things even worse, um, in that locker room. But uh, it was definitely a tough year, bro. <laughs> I forgot about that. But yeah, it was definitely a tough year. It was, you know. But uh, but yeah. But it was uh, it was good to get to know Kobe, though. He was a good dude. Hmm. Uh, well, well, we said necessarily we're not going to talk about your career for too long here. So I yeah. guess I'll be the one to break the ice. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of times where people like us or people like me, at least. There's a reason you didn't see my basketball highlights. I suck at the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. we'll have these passionate takes on basketball. And then yeah. a lot of times a player, especially one of the caliber of yourself, will say you have not played the game. How do you feel about people who haven't played basketball, damn near unathletic, speaking on the game of basketball and sometimes being spot on while other times being way left? In short, how do you feel about people who have not played speaking on the game? So, bro, I don't mind people in the comments. Like, that's life. You know, you have your opinion. Like, do I care about, you know, uh, reporters who don't play the game? No. Like, some of the best coaches in the NBA never played the game in the NBA, you know? So, like, I have no problem with that. The only problem I have with, like, fans speaking on it is when they talk about bet. Oh, you fucked up my parlay and shit like that. You know, I don't care about that shit. You know, like, I don't give a fuck. You can tell me, like, my jump hooks are, like, trash. I'm like, you know what? They are trash. I got to work on them, you know? That's just how mm-hmm. I looked at it, though. But for me, like, I didn't care about the bet stuff, though. But, um, but yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't mind, man. Like, you pay your money, you, you can, you can have, you can have your opinions. I mean, like, the other tough stuff is like when I, like, a little piece of my soul dies when people say, "I hope you tear your ACL or some shit like that." Yeah, that's yeah, that's, 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 that's always you know, that's tough to hear, you know. But at the same time. I don't mind, like you know, B. Souls gave me constructive. Crit- That's why I'm here right now. He gave me constructive criticism about my YouTube channel. I gotta ask y'all some questions too, cause I got I gotta pick y'all's brain as well. 
and everything like that. But for me, like I, I think like my pops was just like, you know, you know, you gotta be able to you can't be soft, you know, like you gotta be able to take, you know, what people are saying, hear how they're saying it, and then like, you know, and then you know, be real with yourself. And, and you know, so so I don't think, you know, so I, I'm getting on a tangent right there. But now you you're good, bro. It's a it's this messy situation. I guess my follow would be since you're pretty um neutral on it. If there is one thing that happens that you would say, hey, bro, you really do have to play to understand. Otherwise, yeah. you just don't know or you feel it isn't talked about. What would that be? I think they, they eliminated this, but I used to have the worst games on like four games in five nights. That's that is tough, mm. though, bro. We can play Monday night. We can play, let's just say, 7 a.m. Uh, let's sorry, 7, 7, say a 730 game. The game gets done, let's say, about like. 9 30 9 45 to say whatever like that right and then let's say before the game uh you know i, I would try not to uh do this but like the first game uh, if we get done at 9 30 9 45 coach says all right planes at 11 or 11 15 so we have time to see family get some food get on the plane we fly we fly let's say we fly to philly we get to philly at like let's say we're not let's say say we get to philly at one o'clock, two o'clock, right? So we get to the to the hotel. I'm still a little wired up. So like I get, you know, I don't go to bed till like you maybe three or something like that. And then we have like on back to backs, you don't have shoot around. We have a uh, film, we have film at like in breakfast at one. And I sleep all day. We get on the we get on the bus, we go to the game, we play that game in Philly. From Philly, uh same thing. We get done at 9 45, 10 o'clock or whatever like that, planes at whatever, we fly to the next city. You have a day off, but then those next two games, bro, like my numbers just go down, bro. Cause like the travel, like we go from coast to coast, you go from yeah. Miami to like Cleveland, Cleveland to like that travel right there. So I used to have uppers and downers, bro. I used to say 730 game, 715. I'm taking like like muscle farm pre-workout, like caffeine stuff. I'm caffeine sensitive. Now I can't I, I can't go to bed till like four mm. or five. <laughs> So yeah. what am I going to do? I, I, so I, get, I talk to the I talk to the league. I the league. I say I have this problem with the league. They give me uh, uh, uh they check me out. They say all right, you can get a prescription for Ambien. So I say all right, Ambien. I take the half a pill, and then because I don't want it like you know, so I take half a pill. It works. I still feel groggy the next day, but then like that half a pill eventually turns into like a pill, pill and a half, just so I can get some sleep because like I'm going you know on the plane. Sometimes the plane needs to defrost for like an hour and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's been sitting on the on the tarmac uh, uh, because we had a double overtime game in Cleveland. So now we don't take off till like two a.m. and we have a game the next day, bro. And that shit used to like, kill me, man. It used to kill me. So it was the fatigue factor that you feel like a lot of fans just don't see. Like when they, let's say when Embiid has man. a bad game, yo, you don't know that he just traveled like for ten hours and yeah. needed to play at an extremely high level. On prime but time then again, you have the people say, "Are oh, you making millions of dollars? You got to figure it out." So I'm just like, "Man, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to see if I can get like an IV at every city I fly at. Make I have a nurse come give me an IV yeah. at two, three in the morning. I got to pay extra for that and everything like that. I'm trying to figure out like uh, I'm having like these Normatec boots on my legs to like uh, pump uh, blood through my legs so uh, I can get some fresh legs. I tried everything, man, but that type of stuff, you know." You can't really talk about because back then it'd be like, yo, you soft, like you making millions of dollars, but that shit was that shit was tough though, man. No, I it wasn't all my fault. No, I was gonna say I'd like that because when we had that conversation about expanding the league, that was literally all the criticism in the comments or even on, on here. I think Damo was saying it to me. Well, I know you're saying it in a joking way, but like, oh, but they're they're flying, they'll be flying to Vancouver in like first class, like uh private jet type thing. It's 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 not the same. I know jet you was playing Damo. Bro. Toronto is a great city, but every time we go through Toronto, we have to go through customs, and that's it's long, right? Long, bro, it, it, like, they, they, like they sometimes they fast track us, and if you have any of your teammates have a record, like they'll come through the line and they'll get pulled, and you won't see them till the next day <laughs> because, like in Toronto, like in Canada, they don't play about like you know having a like record and stuff like that. I've had teammates I haven't seen till shoot around the next day because they had to spend like a little while at the the station and everything like that. So that adds even extra more time, like. Do you want to live in Toronto? Uh, you know, like you know, great city. You know, gets cold, really cold, and everything like that. But you got to go through customs like every night. Like that is every time you come back from an away game, you got to go through customs. I ain't trying to overwhelm you with the questions, but you keep set. You keep setting up the lobs, man. Yeah, so yeah, I guess yeah. the, 
the final one would be so you talked about scheduling being the most underrated factor cool how do you feel about a short nba season no i need that money, <laughs> I need that money. <laughs> I need that. okay I get cut, down. <laughs> cut down on more preseason games and then like you know maybe like space them out a little bit more maybe you know maybe what maybe we start the season a little bit later you know what i'm saying let football have their thing for a little bit you know maybe start the season a little bit later going to the going to the to, to the summer a little bit more you know now that we agree yeah for you I I think giving you guys competing with football is do, do you feel like tough. contracts would be lower if there was a shortened season or is it on oh, something yeah. out on one the, the money yeah, it, it, it's based off the tv rights i i i believe so so if there's like mm. less games because you get paid per game you know so yeah yeah that's games like less checks though man i need that money <laughs> so you would you would be anti because these are the things they've just been throwing around with the whole we're adding new teams they yeah. threw around vancouver and mexico city you like that's a crazy concept coming from like an nba player ex- perspective to fly to mexico city from like I don't know New York, like, from New York, yeah, that'd be tough. I mean, for you know, that'd be tough, man. Like Vancouver's nice, like, I, I, but man, that's that's some long flights, though, man. I, I I mean, I'll be for it, though, man. I'll be for it. I'd be for it, but uh, we'll make it figure out where guys don't have to get so tired, you know, flying around. So they probably sit out more games now. Hmm. That now, that's sense. a fact because when we when we looked where Mexico City was, I didn't realize it was that deep in Mexico. Yeah. I thought it was a little closer. That that month, that was South Mexico. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't. We all thought it was like deep. right under Nevada type shit. We all thought it was <laughs> in Mexico for real. That was crazy. <laughs> all right, let's get into it because we gotta bash his old team just a little bit more. Uh-oh. It's time. We got it. We got to talk about what happened last night. We, we yeah, we can't. We can't just ignore it. We can't ignore it. So elephant in the room. Yeah. Elephant in the room. The yawn is in the room. Apparently. Yeah. Um. So last night, our guy Giannis, historic night, right? Yeah. Sixty four points. No, no, no. <laughs> Sixty four points. Um. Thirty two free throws. They don't want. They don't want to talk about that. That's just bad. That's not. That's not crazy. Thirty two free throws. I'll, I'll admit crazy. it. As, 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 free throws is insane. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a Giannis fan exactly. I love Giannis. Love Y'all, thirty two is kind of crazy. Okay, so was he, he made like him beat though, or was it? No, 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 no. Like, it was fouling. No, it was fouling. Okay. Okay. Mean, so okay, okay. Yeah. So he, first of all, he made twenty four, and from for a guy that airballs free throws notoriously, I'm proud of Giannis. I don't know. <laughs> That's good. Hey, hey. Yeah, he hit him. Okay. I knew that so was they, a long ass game too. He'd be taking a while to take them free throws, man. Yeah, they said it uh, Rick Carlisle <laughs> said it was like a couple hours or whatever the case may be. Yeah. All right. So game ends. And I'm glad Roy is here so we can really get to the meat and potatoes of this. Game ends. Um, you know, they had to it was it was a blowout-ish. They put the bench guys in. They have to uh, uh Indiana starts coming back a little bit. Bucks send back in their starters. Giannis gets to 64 points. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Game ends. Pacers assistant coach gets the ball. I mean, he's literally foot on the court as soon as the buzzer goes off. Goes to the ref, snatches the ball, runs to the back. Giannis, that people up. Now he's looking for that ball. This is a franchise record, by the way, for historic franchise. Giannis wants that ball. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> 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 yeah. And this I is think he really want that in ball. the in the hallway, in the Pacers tunnel. Nah, they're going crazy. These they are the still, hey, Pacers still on business. Uh, they ain't giving that up. <laughs> That's Lloyd Pierce. That's Tyrese Halliburton. You know, he's he trying to he trying to assert his dominance right there. Um, so that's that's from their perspective what happens. And then I saw this. We're, we're gonna watch Rick Carlisle comments because I didn't I didn't necessarily like Rick Carlisle. Rick Carlisle comes. He explains the whole situation from his perspective. Uh, Let me turn that up. Everybody say it a there was there's a misunderstanding about the game ball. Um, it was Oscar Shibwe's first NBA official NBA point, so we always get the game ball. 
we were not thinking about Giannis's franchise record. So we grabbed the ball and um, a couple of, a couple of minutes later, several of their players ended up in our hallway, and there was a big a big uh, I don't know I don't know what to call it a fracas uh, melee, melee whatever kerfuffle right. melee is landed oh, the general manager got elbowed <laughs> in the ribs by one of their players, um, and. So he certainly has a bruised, bruised rib, and who knows, you know, if it's anything more than that. But um, unfortunate situation. We don't need the the official game ball. There's two game balls there. Um, you know, we could have taken the other one, um, but it didn't need to escalate to that. And so, you know, really just, you know, unfortunate <clears throat> third game we played these guys within two and a half three weeks so mm -hmm. things are heated with the competition <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry. i can't listen no more. <laughs> he's clearly sick i don't know why yeah. i don't know why he's up there <laughs> can, you, can you play the clip with the nasus on the bench that was crazy too i don't know if you saw that clip oh uh, yeah i'll find the nasus was oh, ready to throw to down yeah, he's trying to get to the, I will say this too. Um, what's it called? So Mark Mark Cuban also kind of agree with Rick Carlisle. Well, not Rick Carlisle. He said that the rookie should have gotten the game ball, and Giannis should have gotten a, a signed signature scorecard or some mess like that. That's what he should have got. Which, you know, I, I don't necessarily know. This is the knock on the bench over here. That's him back there in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real bro for Hold real. me back. Hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But so I need to know is this game ball for a, a rookie's first scored points? Is that a real thing? I mean, I feel like I know, I, I think I, I believe no. it. Could be true. Like I'm not sure. No, like no, so you no. don't have one. I didn't get mine. I'm trying to remember. Okay. I, when this happened, I tried to remember if I have something downstairs. But I don't think like my first bucket was in Detroit, and I like, I don't think that I got a ball. I, I think they probably just gave me some ball. If anything, you know, I don't think it was like the actual ball. So I'm not sure. It may be Dang. different from team to team. So. There could be some truth to that, though, man. But I like the fact that they was like, no, nah, we're not giving you the ball. But there could be some truth to that, though. Damn. No. That is like the worst thing I wanted to hear because I'm going to be honest. We were I was just uh, done talking about this with Souls about a couple hours ago. And I've been back and forth ever since the conversation. And initially I was like, I guess get a rook the ball because that's going to be a more important story for him. But then I'm like, do they do that? <laughs> and then I'm like, 64 points is crazy. But then at the time, I was like, I mean, it's 2024, 20, 23, everybody's dropping 60, but that's the franchise record. So I was going back and forth. But now I'm hearing that not a lot of players, you know, get the game ball. I thought it was a rumor, but here you are basically uh, even questioning it. That's tough. That's I get it to the rookie, though. I think, I think it does happen, though, but, like, I think mainly at home. Like, if you score your first bucket at home, I think they give you the ball. I don't know, like, they do that on you know at away games, though. You know? So, like, that's the thing, though. That's the thing. I'm not sure about away games. That's different. That was my thing. I ain't going to lie to you. My whole take on it when I first heard it was I'm on the side of Rick Carlisle. They have a history of doing that. So, is there any other rookie this season that scored their first bucket? They got the official game ball. It can you can re say that? Well, not Reese, he wasn't there, but can Benedict Matherin say that from last year or whoever it is? Uh, yeah. Chris Durante, if they can't, then all right, Rick Harlow, you full of shit. And I didn't realize it wasn't home, it wasn't a home game. I didn't watch the game, so I, I thought yeah. initially it was in Indiana. I thought it was in Indiana. Indiana. Giannis breaks the franchise record in Milwaukee. Man, get that boy that ball. You yeah, see, that, that, that's it too. that was the thing, he wanted that ball. Get that boy that ball. So I'll say this though, for me as a player, if it is true what the, what, what they're saying, and I'm gonna roll with the Pacers, but for me as a player, I don't want my first you know bucket or point to be like from a free throw, then you miss the other free throw. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man. let me have a post move and like let me like make a move. It, like making a free throw in the game 
that counts as a point. But for me, I rather get my point like by you know doing an up and under and like getting somebody going one way and scoring. And I then I want the ball, you know. But for a free mm-hmm. throw, what, what do y'all think though? Like, would you take that home? Like, would you want that? me personally? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I was gonna I was gonna try to see if I could like troll you and gaslight. Maybe nah, I'd have been <laughs> like, yeah, nah. You got it, bro. I don't want this weak ass ball. <laughs> like I, I missed the second free throw. If I had made both free throws, I ain't gonna lie, honest. That's me. That's my first two. <laughs> but I made one, missed one, and I just got subbed in late. Man, I had that ball, bro. I I'll, I'll, I'll give it to the rookie because I feel like, I mean, Giannis is talented enough to potentially break that record. So uh, if if boo. I'm saying, but if he breaks that record, now that ball means nothing because he just set another record. But to that rookie, that's always gonna be his first bucket. Period. Point blank. So I just give it to the rookie. All right. So, so I, I dis I disagree, because honestly, if they had both balls in their hand, turn around, turn back around, you wouldn't know which ball. Because there's two balls. You wouldn't know yeah. which ball is the game ball. You wouldn't know which ball is the the second ball or whatever. Because they don't do they, they don't switch balls. Kind of like football. They don't switch football balls at halftime because um. Like a like CP three maybe like yo like I don't like this ball or something like that and they may get another ball like you know so they they switch it out though you know what I'm saying so like so I'm sure like Giannis probably scored some buckets with but with pause both of those balls and everything like that. So I mean yeah at that point okay at that point still it's still I promise you if they would have literally just handed Giannis a ball. I swear it wouldn't have mattered. Or just handed the rookie a ball. Like, I, I feel like it wouldn't matter. And also, I don't know. Maybe this is just, like, a, a man thing, too. I wonder if they would have asked the rookie, like, yo, if you, uh, like, can we give your first bucket score ball to Giannis? I wonder what he would have said. Mm. But I mean, I, like, I yo, let me get the Greek freaks for the next five years. I want to be on <laughs> Team Greek freak, freak. freak. Let me get paid on it. Like, you know, I'll be a uh, Team Jordan. Like, Team Freak. Give me a signed jersey. Yo, take that jersey hey, off. Half of the off jersey. Half of the Team Freak. Let's team negotiate. Freak. I'm with so, you. So if you if you're on the opposing team, do you know like that a player is going off? I know oh, that yeah, sounds yeah, crazy. Yeah. We sitting there like we sitting there like if I'm on the bench, somebody getting cooked. <laughs> they come back to the bench. We just looking at them like, yo, Giannis is cooking you, bro. Like, but see no now, but see now I know <laughs> now I know more than ever that what the Pacers did is like so much more intentional and so much more petty. Cause now I'm thinking Rick Carlisle was like, nah, fuck these niggas, man. Hey, as soon, <laughs> soon as that, soon as that bell goes off, the team, the team, the ball. team ain't do that. Oh, I, 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 I think there's a legitimate new rivalry in the league, though. I like this, man. I like. I like it. I'm all right. Yeah, they're yeah. in the same division, I think. I like. I know what I see. Kyrie do the Dame time. Dame time. Dame and uh, what's his name? Then they have issues with the the you know, humble yourself and yeah. stuff like that. I like it. Mm. I like that, like yeah. the nice NBA stuff. Man, I want them trash talking. I like the no, 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 no punching people like uh, like what's his name, but like. I want I want them like physicality, man. I don't want always like big the Draymond. nice stuff, though, man. <laughs> not too much, not too much on Draymond. Don't. I just said big Draymond, man. No, nah, I'm just saying. I'm saying if you and you and Roy, like y'all on my guy. They suspended him indefinitely, which I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I don't... He's been known to be wilding. He's been known to wild out a little bit. Sit down for a little bit. They say he got to take anger management. He don't. He doesn't have an anger management issue though. He has a misunderstood issue. Oh. You understand what I'm saying? Cause, cause that's a natural, bro. You, you, you done did it before. You've been playing. Man, I'm not somebody. Man, like, yo, this man be like, like stepping on people's nuts, picking them. <laughs> like, I've never once, like, if I, if I hit somebody in the, in the, in the, in the, with my elbow, two or three players that plays down. I'm like, yo, you good, man? You know, stuff like that. You know, to me, I, you know, I don't even try to get nobody concussions or anything like that. But this man be. You, you, you think know, he does you know, it on purpose? You think he does it on purpose? It's hard. Ah, oh, here you it's go. Hard. It's hard it's not to do it on purpose. It's hard not to do it on purpose, though. Like, how do you like run up on somebody and like choke them and everything? Like, that's like very deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's an like, accident. Like, really had nothing to do with it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, can I don't know, know, ask you this? Smack was crazy. Wait, can, can I ask this as we brought up the choke? Because I, I need to ask this question. Because I always have this as a counter. 
Rudy Gobert in that situation, once you see yourself being choked on national television, to see yeah. Car Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards essentially help you get choked, does that make you feel some type of way like, yo, do these dudes really got my back? Like, or is it just, oh, it's a misunderstanding? Oh, man, I don't know, man. Like, Draymond's the X factor, but like your teammates always got to have your back, though. So I got to go back and like look at that. I only look at like the, the, the choking, though, man. But I don't, I don't know if you want to bring it up. But if... Lance, I'm about to get into it. I was just yeah. about to ask. If Lance gets into them shenanigans, you got his back, right? That's what you're saying? I'm getting Lance out that situation. Like, I'm like <laughs> grabbing Lance and like moving, putting myself in between. So if any punches come, like he's between him and the, in, in, in the punch. I would, man, I ain't trying to lose no checks. I'd much rather make sure, like, Lance don't lose no checks either and it'll get you out the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 that's just me. You know what I'm saying? A real big man, for real. I, I, yeah. I, I respect that. A, a real team. Again, like, it's, it's really like different. That. In the 80s, I, like, let's say, like, I, I, I work with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I had to – the Pacers wanted me to work with him. And so they, they made me pay him, like, 30 k Yes, for, that was him, too. <laughs> what? There was the, a the thumbs, thumbs up, up thing happened. You didn't see <laughs> Oh, there it is again. <laughs> but but when he played, you allowed to punch people and like fight and like you have no repercussions though. You know what I'm saying? So like people, you know, in the in the 90s, they were doing that too, and there's no repercussion. But for me, I'm just like, bro, like I got into a spat with um with what's his name? Golden State. I sat out a game, I lose like a check. That's like uh, I think like might have been like 150,000 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, it's like like you know, I'm not trying to like, bro. I grew up poor. I'm not trying to leave no food on, like on the table. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I, I'm much rather get you out of the situation. That hurt my chest. Oh my yeah, God. I'm about to say. No, I can I could feel it. I will say this. I don't know how I feel about the indefinite and the classes and all this other stuff. I, I'm not put a put a time stamp on it. I will say this one was definitely. Man, I feel like it was less deliberate than, of course, the choke. The choke was outrageous. I ain't gonna lie, Draymond's tripping. This stomach. one was like a little, uh, but I just don't. I don't get the concept of like an indefinite suspension. Um, put it, put a number on it, and also stop trying to make me take classes. I'm a grown man. But man, I, I, I don't remember. I'm gonna ask you guys how long was Morant out last year? Was it like four games, and then he was indefinitely out, or or did they always have a number on? Because like. I'm not sure. The word like, is never standard, thrown out bro, there. Like, there's always a number, and he's the first there time. Was always, there was always a number on God stuff. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Lo saying to my belief, Lo. yeah. Lo is shaking his head down there. Dang, I, I remember. We got, we got a guess, I another know. guess on the show. It was, uh, bring, bring it, it, was in, it was indefinite first, and then they gave him games. Thank you, Lo. We'll bring you mm. back up. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking at trying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he got so he got indefinite, but he got indefinite based off of some off court stuff. So I just I don't I don't like indefinite uh suspensions. Like I just don't. I, I mean, don't know, I hope they don't be passing that out like too much. But like, bro, he snuffed what's his name in practice last year. Like, you know, he's just. I mean, I don't know, bro. And you know, I don't know, man. I, I wish I hope he gets the help he needs, bro, because. What other player you know in the past that was doing that? Like, who was the pl- only other player I've seen? I don't know. I don't think I've seen anybody be piecing people up like like that. You know. Um, <laughs> I've heard Ron Artest's who, who name been thrown around like, like, a lot. Like recently, who else has been doing that? I mean, no one's been doing it recently. But I was going to ask you: Has there ever been situations like that that at least you witnessed on the teams you've been on where? There has been a like a, a squabble in the locker room, and y'all keep it on the hush hush, and nothing happens. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely, 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 definitely happened. I will speak on one situation because uh, it's already out there already, and like other of my teammates have talked about it. But uh, I think we like the first year we played the Heat in the second round of the tournament or something of, of, the, of the playoffs. And it was when Lance Stevenson wasn't playing that much, and then. Um, and then, like, he was just messing around on the bench. He When he got in the game, he would, like, do certain things that, you know. he Lance would do something where he would score a basket on you on the on the, on the the fast break, slow down. So, like, you know, D-Wade would catch the ball, like, take the ball out of bounds, and he would just, like, 
like hit them, you know, as he's like running down the court. So there'll be things like that. But um, hold on, I'm, hold on. I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. What was the question again? Uh, situations oh. in practice or just like inner team squabbles that uh happen oh. that don't get talked about or no one gets a suspension or something from it. Oh, there's been squabbles about poker on the plane and stuff like that, but there was a squabble that got real with the with the with the heat. Um Lance was like he went like this to to uh to who was D Wade or LeBron or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then bro, I tell you this, I didn't notice because I was like uh I was I had some interviews or, or doing family stuff, but uh D Wade did not like that. And uh Jawan Howard was like the last year of his Jawan Howard was in the last year of playing before he got into coaching. And then, uh, and then, uh, Udonis Haslam waited in Lance's like by his car in the parking lot, just waited. They was gonna have some words, and then George Hill had to like walk with Lance to his car and then tell like Udonis, like, yo, chill, you chill, like, you know, he ain't mean it like that and everything like that, you know. So that's like security had to come, but like Udonis and Jawan Howard was standing on business. They was waiting for Lance in the, in the parking lot and everything like that at, at Conseco or whatever it's called now and everything like that. So there's like a lot of stuff that happens. Well, like my teammates talk about it, but a lot of time stuff happens all the time, you know? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. You, D, and Jawan Howard waiting at the car. I'm Ubering home. Nigga, <laughs> that's their car. That's their car now. I, I'm the alternate. Hell right. no. Yeah. Got I got though, man. I'm telling my teammate though, like, at some point, like that might get you going. At some point, though, like, yo, relax. Like, like now I got it. Like, I'm George yeah. Hill, right? Like, now I gotta yeah. walk to this bullshit. Look, like, what are you doing, bro? I gotta oh, I walk gotta you to your car, man. Like, I feel, yeah, like that's still you being drawn home. down there. Like, damn, bro. Oh, I gotta that's guard right. you. What a point guard doing it? At all people, you got your dinosaur having a Jawan You send the point guard to walk with Lance? Oh, man. 6'3 George Hill down there. Oh, my God. Yo, yeah, I ain't with y'all. Ain't nobody over 6'9, though. Against two people that's over six nine, like what are we doing? Relax, like, was geez, relax, relax. See me like <laughs> looking up. Hey, hey, hey guys, hey, chill. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Take it easy. Like, Take it easy. Yeah. You didn't mean it like that. Big guys, big guys. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, you know what else is crazy? Oh. What? These picks for prize uh, picks. Shout out to Prize Picks for being the sponsor of this podcast. <laughs> um, the best, the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports um they got an app the you know the game is pretty simple and i'll give y'all a demo right now i'll go ahead and share my screen with y'all real quick boom so this is what the website looks like um they also have an app as well like i mentioned links will be in the description for that they got different sports on here you can even um do picks on just the fourth quarter of an nba game but uh let's stick with the nba they got different stats on here as well uh, PRA rebounds, points, assists. Uh, guys, I'm gonna need y'all help. No, nah, pick, your, picks, pick your own, pick your I'm own sheet say, today. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah, see you pick your own sheet today. Yeah, because yeah. I don't want you blaming nobody, man. I don't blame anyone anymore, man. It's cool. Just let us no. know what you mean. Nah, I'll tell you if you got a code. Just tell me what you feel, and I'll tell you. Well, first of oh, all, that, that KD, that KD, yeah, KD. Yeah. KD. This, this is on Monday, though, but I'll, I'll definitely take it. Uh, yeah. 0.5 points. I think That's he's gonna Christmas. get more than 0.5 points. Yeah. Um, what else is on here, man? Jokic versus the Nets. Ooh, they, them boys play defense out there. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Uh... Come on, you gotta be confident. Just pick something. Let's go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a bonus. Mm-hmm. That's, That's the bonus right. was looking good. I think more, I more on Durant. More on Jokic. I think he's gonna have. Is a there a Jordan game. Poole? And can you take Jordan the left? Here we go. Hold on. Oh, oh, no. Jordan Poole is not playing tonight. <laughs> who, who do the Kings uh, play? The Kings play the Thunder. Sabonis getting eighteen. He asked me. Oh, oh, Shade, Shade and Sharp more, and let's get up out of here. Shade and Sharp more. Shade and Sharp more. Here we go. Of course. Um, let's put ten on it. Let's do flex. Stay safe. Um, place the entry right there. Boom, and that's how you make an entry. And thanks to Prize Picks, you guys can get um up to one hundred dollars matched, uh one hundred percent. So if you put in fifty, you get fifty. If you put in eighty, you get eighty. And now you got one hundred sixty to work with. Now, like we talked about on this podcast, be nice to these players if your picks don't hit. All right. Um, but yeah, use code LKIB for that. And shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring this podcast, man. That's a hey, uh, hey man. I gotta ask you all some questions, man. 
Talk to me. How how did y'all get started in the YouTube uh, 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 Twitch sphere? You know, because I'm I'm new to this, so I gotta pick y'all's brain. Y'all y'all talk, y'all ask me questions. Now it's time for me to pick y'all's brain, man. I don't know who wants to start. Well, we're we're kind of like the Avengers. Um, oh my God! You know, <laughs> like we, we... Yo, stop talking. No, we, we, we all came. I, I, I'm Nick Fury. Oh, I'll say that. <laughs> but you know, we we all came from different parts of the internet. Um, you know, I started doing the the YouTube stuff seriously around 2016, 2017. Um, I had a podcast back then. Uh, Damo reached out to me through my comment section. Yes, yes, just the comment section, nothing else. And we started a podcast from there. Um, and I've I've been doing work with him ever since. Um, Have y'all met, met person yet, or, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we we met in person. Yeah. We met in person. We met in person first time. A lot of fun. Two years stories, ago, man. Two years ago. Yeah. Crazy yeah. stories, man. And then I met uh, Omar around two years ago, right? Yeah. Two two and a half years ago on an app called Locker Room. Um, and I met Sage as a guest on the podcast as well. He was a guest on the podcast, and then uh, we had some um, management issues. No, nah, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just playing. We we <laughs> we change up. We change up the host at one point. Um and uh you know we we had a a good relationship with Omar and Sage and we brought on Omar and Sage as regulars on the pod and the rest was history for the podcast but you know we got other stuff going on. Wait, Damo, who do you think you are in the Avengers? Oh, I'm the Hulk. I, I feel like I'm the Hulk. I would. I, I feel like like what I do is great, but it's so much extracurricular nonsense that comes with it. It's like oh my, oh my god! But that's the Hulk, right? Like that's me. Okay, Sage. Don't ask me like that. Oh, I knew you was gonna go get it. I knew you was gonna go get it. Dang, that means I can't be Iron Man. Okay. What kind of question is that, man? Oh. What kind of question is that, man? <laughs> don't ask it. Don't ask those. Don't ask those, man. If you're taking oh. Iron Man, I'll take Captain Ooh. America. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'll take <laughs> I'll take Captain America since you want to be Iron Man. Dang, I want to be Iron Man. You you the you the old cap uh, or I keep going or you the you the new cap in the Disney Plus. Uh what's it? Uh, no, the no, no, no. I'm I'm I got I got to be old cap. I can't be new cap. I can't be can't. He's not he's not cool enough. I got to be new cap. Might might be questioning why I decided to stay in the 1930s, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that I'm, was just flagrant, by the way. Yo, Cap just wants to go back to that time. Okay, no questions. You know was, why, man? He don't want to I was gonna what, ask you, the, what's the grind been like, man, to get subscribers up? Like, what, what's it like, though, man? From me, like y'all's perspective, man. Uh, let's bring, let's bring low me? up. Let's bring low up in yeah, this conversation. Up, yeah, shout out to this low, is man. this is this is legend of winning. This is my uh my blood yeah, brother. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Oh if my god! I'm, 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 I would be Fury because let's be clear, oh. I would be Fury. What? Oh, oh, god. oh I soul. would not let that slide. These souls, these souls would be Stark. Shang Chi, just say it, man. No, no, you just start talking. Yo, that's crazy. What are you doing? You only got one movie, man. You need a trilogy, man. Come on, man. B souls, you're more pivotal to the timeline, way more than that. Come on now. Then Shang Chi. All right, not too much now. That's not still Asian hate. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Much, now pivotal now, huh? Much, All right. <laughs> nah, I'm, I would definitely be. Um, come on, I'll be Fury. What makes you say yeah. that? Don't. Let's be, let's be honest. Don't you say Fury. Fury. Bro, I'm, 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 Fury. How long has B and So and I know each other? 16, 2016, 2017? Yeah, that long. Yeah. You joined my Discord. Oh. Mm. Or, 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 or did I allow you to think that it was your Discord? As, ah, as, as Fury, as Fury, Fury, to Fury, think. Fury, Fury allows Tony Stark to think that he's running stuff, but he's not really running stuff. Like, let's be honest. Ah, here we go, man. Exactly, here we go. Exactly, exactly. So who's our podcaster is too? This is crazy. I'm going to so be honest the, with you. I'm, honest, I'm happy you claiming that Discord because I'm not claiming it. Look, listen. listen. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason, the reason I wanted to bring Legend of Winning up, my brother, is because he's also a... Uh, a YouTuber, you know, we gotta gotta introduce him to friend of the show, Roy. But no, I wanted to, I, oh, I wanted to bring him up because he's a he's a YouTuber as well. We can he can add perspective to this conversation. Um, I ain't gonna lie, slow and steady wins the race, at least for me. Slow and steady wins the race. I think that's how the podcast saw success. Until oh. oh my gosh, until that one day where one video, one TikTok, one 
live stream, one something just blows off. And then, hey, she's going crazy. I think, I, think, I think it's a snowball effect for a majority of people. Like, you get this meteoric rise uh, re- relative to your standards, and then your floor raises for a while. And then another moment happens where it rises up again, and now you have a new floor. It's, ne- it's never like this. It's, it's, it's like a ladder, I feel like. Do you feel like you have to change the content up every now and then? Because, like, you know, I just, I'm just asking y'all, like, because I would love info because y'all are the professionals in this aspect right here. I've been doing it for a while. But, like, I just do react videos. Like, my first three videos, I'm, I did all myself. But, like, I feel like the videos are, like, like you said, like, they, they went up and then, like, they, they, they plateau and stuff. Do you feel like you should, like, change, like, stuff up or, like, or just stick to what you're doing and just, just, just keep grinding it out? Because, like, for me, you know, I pretty much only have time to do react videos. So like, I'm just like, what do you guys do? I mean, I found my, uh, the way I came up, I found a niche and, uh, stuck to it. But then eventually, uh, I made a personal decision and I separated from that niche and found, uh, to do other things. However, I'll admit at the early going, you pay for that pivot. So you pay for that personal decision. So ultimately when you are acclimating certain numbers, in the certain uh, niche, you can choose to stay there if you're numb enough or having fun enough to do the same things. And it doesn't have yeah. to be one to one like reactions. As long as you're talking basketball, I think you're fine. But um, yeah. like for me, for example, I was talking basketball. Then one day I put the gauntlet on and, and now I'm talking yeah. about anime. And now I'm like uh, doing all these random miscellaneous things. And uh, long term, it paid off. But uh, there was definitely a dark age period. So that would probably be my biggest warning if you ever get burnt out. And I think that'd be my uh, biggest suggestion. Just make sure you go at a pace where you don't burn out. I, I think for well, the what anime you watching? Though? What anime you watching? Ah, well, th- th- right now, right now I'm watching Code Geass. I don't know if you know what that is. Um, I watched. I, I'm about to rewatch Dragon Ball soon. And then uh, they got me watching. They got me watching Black Lagoon. Dragon Ball? <laughs> yeah, I got a plan for rewatching Dragon Ball. I got the OG for- one. Yeah, OG. What? Doesn't get. It that's doesn't get talked about enough. It doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah, he got man. too much time on his hands, man. A little that's bit. What, that's what it sounds like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, got, I got a lot of things to do, man. I got a lot this of things. This is Mr. 24 hour stream. So um when you when you say pivot, what do you mean pivot? You mean pivot into like other style of basketball content or pivot to something completely different? I'm not sure because like I'm just like I so, I don't know. For some reason, like I get this one comment on my like, you know, the 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 the, the app for like the, the, the content creators like is this all you're going to do? Is this a, like the same? Like, it's like one person that said this thing. Are you still going to do the same react videos all the time? And I'm just like, man, like, I'm kind of like juggling some things. And like, I have fun doing the react videos. And it's kind of like so much I hear about YouTube is just like it's a grind every day. And people got to put out videos because like they have to for the algorithm and stuff. And I want to do it, you know, to, mm-hmm. to be able to make money at some point down the road. But I, I enjoy doing it, you know, and it's like to eat like. Not the easiest, but like I have a job at CBS where I do like broadcasting and I have four kids under six, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you know, I'm not making excuses or anything like that. There's plenty of YouTubers that, you know, have jobs and have kids, you know. But like the easiest thing for me to do right now is just like watch like an hour or two games in one day, react to them, and then just, you know, get those videos out. You know, it's like to come up with new content every time maybe a little tough right now. Yeah, well, I would say personally, I mean, and I'm not gonna act like I'm just Mr. Know the Formula, but if this is just something you're doing in your free time for fun, personally, I would <clears throat> I would just say keep it up at that. Like, if this is something that you want to long term see the long term gain of it, fulfillment of it, when you find it out down the road, cool, you could figure that pivot out, figure the direction as you learn yeah. as you go. But right now, keep on the pace that you're going at. You're in a privileged situation compared to a lot of people just starting in that lane alone of just reacting. Yeah. Just react to whatever you want to react to. People will get consumed with whoever Roy Hibbert is and whatever you do, and yeah. it'll just continue from there, from my perspective. I, th- I think in the beginning, for me, it's all about just finding what type of content you just enjoy making. Right. And then you do the optimization after that. Um, but to answer your question, though, for, for a long-term strategy, I do think changing your content is just a part of the game. Like, I, I don't know any YouTuber, and if you can name any YouTuber – It'll be like a handful that have done the yeah. same type of content for over Five a decade. Years. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like crazy changes. So so for example, when I started, I used to do 
voiceover videos, just footage on the screen, um, edited everything, this, that, and the third. And then yeah. over time, I made the transition to doing reaction videos with Sage. So still in the lane of basketball, but there's a there's a more fun aspect to it. Like there's a more conversational aspect to it as well. We can get yeah. a lot more personality in there. So I think yeah. To, to answer your question, I do think change is, is necessary, Jeez. but it's not like but not this oh we got to do it every yeah, year. Not, yeah, it can, it can be like you can make that change four to five years in, maybe even longer for that, depending on like what your brain does at that point. You want a serious, will... you want a serious answer? Oh, go ahead. Damn, you want a real answer, or you want you know just a give him the real answer? Well, uh, I actually you want a real answer. Or you want a buttercup answer? No, 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 no. Take the gloves off, bro. Tell me. Uh, no. The real answer is like I don't know who the who the fuck left that comment, but they don't know what they're talking about. If you if you were if the YouTube algorithm has already established you as like a, a react type of a content creator to basketball content, then yeah. um, that's probably what the realm you're going to be in. Even if you try to pivot to other type of basketball content, it's going to be very difficult for you to like find a consistent audience. So that's already worked out for you. It's you've already seen some form of growth in that, and so that's kind of like where you are. I wouldn't overthink it at all. Um, and then what you reacted to that works in particular is like the uh, hyper hyper attentive type of um, content where they're just kind of like flipping um, highlights at you and stuff like that, or some of the bigger yeah. games that somebody may have had. Um, you could always sprinkle in like more focus based reactionary content here and there. But for the most part, like that's the type of content that you're probably going to have to produce for the first like how how many ever long before you establish yourself as like a content creator, or get consistent views, and then within that time frame, sprinkle in your personality. So when you do yeah. make the pivot, you can make the pivot into something that like still latches on to who you are as a person because that's what the audience has slowly grown to understand you as. Because but that's at like, some point, like I love like certain video games, like but like eventually, like I would love to like review like NBA 2K, like whenever it comes out, you know, and like, like, you know, do like a video game review of 2K or live or something like that, you know, just to sprinkle in some other things and stuff like that, you know, so hopefully that addresses certain aspects you be, that comes up. You'd yeah, be better off just creating a whole other channel, though, to be honest yeah. with you. For that one? Yeah, yeah if you, you, you want to play video games, yeah, it'd be another channel. Yeah, like, they, like the way the algorithm works, it just works based off of, the algorithm is identified to your channel as like NBA content, reaction to NBA content. If you start doing cooking or video games or workout or fitness or something like that or DIY stuff on that channel, they're pushing that that content to people who they believe want to see basketball reaction stuff. And so now yeah. if I've already watched reaction basketball stuff and all of a sudden I see you building a birdhouse. I'm like, I don't want to watch that shit. Yeah, because the, the algorithm is always about the viewers. It's never about the creator. So, yeah, right. like, if, if you subscribe to someone for basketball content, and like what Lo just said, they started doing a travel vlog tomorrow or cooking videos or they started talking about, I don't know, Marvel movies. When I subscribe to you for NBA basketball, the numbers will dip like crazy because that's, I mean, it's kind of like traditional uh, cable. Like, if, if, if I'm on ESPN, I want to watch sports. I do not want to, you know what I'm saying, watch... Yeah. TLC Stephen stuff. A's Stephen A's fragrance collection. Yeah. No. yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you even a somewhat sample size of what that drop is because I used to be heavy on basketball documentaries, and I had a video that was at like around forty thousand. I had a video prior to at like a hundred, and then I had a video that granted that video bomb, but it was at like twenty thousand. Then I officially made my pivot. I think I reacted to some YouTuber on like a completely different subject. That video, I don't even think today has 10k. So it's like it's a whole different um, ball game. If like like Lo said, if I'm a basketball fan and then I see you playing chess, I don't checkmate. I'm click. I'm unsubscribed now. Like that. Like they do not care. I do want to. Um, I do want to ask because most most NBA or ex NBA players. Off? Damn. Huh? You said you what? My question off? No, not yet. Most most ex NBA players who get into like the media sphere. Yeah. I was I was talking about this with like B Souls the other day. They get the the push, the the manufactured the manufactured push from like whatever brand or whatever. So they go set up some podcast mics, find some sponsor, and they do content that way. Why why did you do content 
in this sense? Like, why did you want to start your own YouTube channel and do reactions and something just a little bit different than the rest of the X and NBA players? I mean, um, there, like, I always, like, at, at first I wanted to start a YouTube channel back when I was playing, doing, like, Call of Duty, because that's all we would play when we used to go to different cities and set up, call it, like, play Call of Duty in the hotel room. And I would, like, try to, like, record my things and then and then, and then put it on. And eventually I didn't do it. But then I'd say a couple years later, I started doing jujitsu. It's like a form of martial arts. I wanted to like do a jujitsu channel where like I'm rolling and sparring and like doing like doing that. And then like I actually had spine surgery uh, over the summer. So I had to cut that out and everything like that from playing basketball. And I'm just like, all right, I'm going into year two at CBS. I'm a broadcaster. Um, when I do broadcasting, they give me uh, access to a, a, a channel. I mean, to a, 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 a I'm gonna try to not be as long-winded, but they give me access to to technology to sites where I can like look up, you say uh, Zach Eady's last eight post-ups on the left block shooting over the right shoulder. So mm -hmm. I have access to it, like is that. So the first three videos I did, I tried to figure out how to you know use those college players to make a video, and mm -hmm. then like it didn't do well or whatever like that. So. Um, I always wanted to have a YouTube channel. I asked it to myself, how can I make myself more valuable when contract time comes up? Maybe if I have like a a, a, a following, you know, like on, on YouTube and stuff. Because CBS, yeah. their CBS Sports uh, YouTube channel doesn't really do numbers and stuff. So I want to mm -hmm. make it to the, make, make my way up the CBS ladder. So I'm just like, all right, in four or five years when, you know, I want to get my big deal when I re up at CBS or go to NBC or ESPN. I want to be like, you know, not as I'm relative like Pat McAfee. You know, he yeah huge. He built it over time. He put the work in and everything like that. I'm not just saying I'm gonna jump to that, but that type of stuff helps you out. You know, when when come negotiation times and stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna invest in myself. This is something I'm gonna do. So I started doing like the YouTube channel. The first three videos I did myself. Um, learned that I was taking a minute and a half before I got into my uh, to what I want to talk about. <laughs> so, so I had a dude audit my YouTube channel, and he basically this this this. I actually reached out to this people called Think Media. I don't know if you ever heard of them on YouTube. Yep. They teach you how yeah. to start a YouTube channel. So one of those guys, uh, Molt, uh, Nolan Molt, we got we exchanged info, and uh, he audited my channel, and he gave me this whole PDF file and everything. And he was like, "You should." not be doing all this work yourself you should outsource the work he t told me how to do that and he was like you can crank out two three reaction videos in oh you're all making this yeah Ooh. that's so, um, well that's he, I, I think he might he might damn dude he did he tell you where to go find the services too right so he told me to go to ytjobs.com or whatever yeah, like yeah, that yeah, and he yeah. told me the prices that i should get in there, you know i won't talk about it here no, but, no, no, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you should pay for a thumbnail, for a title, and for for a video and everything like that. Because before, I would make it take me like two and a half, three weeks to make one video when I have to yeah. do all the stuff with the kids and the family. So uh, I went that route right there. Okay, that well, that makes sense because of your schedule. But yeah, um, for everybody else who's listening, don't don't do that. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, you you have the ability, maybe expendable income or not enough time on your hands to do it, but. I highly always just advise people to get familiar with like the back end stuff just so you are familiar with what. Oh man, I was on Final Cut about. Pro, I was on Epidemic Sound, I was yeah. like uh, everything up myself, bro. I was uh, I, I was doing all that, you know, taking no, the no, pictures, trying to figure out the thumbnails. I was doing all that myself, so uh, but yeah, that's where mm -hmm. I started off at, you know. So I would um, even argue based off of your description, and, and yeah. my bad, bro. my bad, bro. No, 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 you got it, you got it, you got it. Um, based off of your description of like, I want a platform where I can talk about 2K when it comes out and stuff like that. I feel, and with your schedule, the way you're talking about it, having a, a podcast or like a live stream might even be the best solution for you. Yeah, that's all about Because, well, number one, it's, it's very low lift. You just hit record, press live, and that's the content right there. Yeah. Um, for the most part. And number two, when it comes to clipping up parts of the podcast and putting that, putting that up on your channel... Like podcasting is is a place where not everything needs to be clipped up, but because you're building up a podcast, you still have this space to get off the 2K reviews, to get yeah. off the movie reviews. Like like on here, 
we market ourselves as a basketball podcast, so we talk about, like, all the clips that you see are basketball-related, most of them. But, like, the back-end conversations is just us, like, bullshitting, to be honest yeah, with you, about, 100%. like, what was going on. So I feel like for you, that, that might be more so in your lane in terms of, yo, we're going to market ourselves as, you know, the first two things. Let's talk about two basketball things. That's going to be the clips that go up on the channel. But, all right, for the rest of the show... I want to talk about the show that I've been watching or like the the new Star Wars movie that just came out. It doesn't have to be a clip, but you're still growing the audience because yeah. they're following the podcast yeah. because they love the podcast. Two things. Like I sometimes see every NBA player doing a podcast. For some reason, I'm just like, bro, like maybe I want to be different, you know, whatever like that. But that's just me. I should probably get over that. But like you guys find it successful to like – not be in the same room because everybody has, you know, like Gilbert Arenas, all those guys are all in the same room. Does it make a difference in terms of like, you know, sitting down with mics? I feel like the, I'm thinking about overhead, man. I'm like renting a place, rent, like getting the mics, you know, getting the lights, you know, like to me, like, is there a difference between like what you guys are doing and then like, you know, what the overhead must be, you know, for like doing like a studio? I, I, I personally, me personally, I would prefer us to be in person, but I think that um, the job can still get done. Like it allows for, in theory, more collaborations. I know people's mind when they say a oh, podcast automatically it's in person, but yeah. you can still create a great show, great content. Um, if you're not necessarily in person, um, they're there just listening to you and you speak and everything like that. I, you, you might even be able, there might be a conversation that you can create a deeper connection or a better connection with some of your fan base. If it's not this whole produced show and it's more just about what you can put virtually on the screen. I will say this too. And that's why I was commending you for the job that you've done with your channel. I feel like, and I, no, no shade to none of them that do it. No shade to none of the XNBA players that do it. But they get the big backing to do that. That's how they pull that off, from my perspective. I don't, I don't think a lot of them put that on, especially just from the, the inception. But they they get a big backing to do that. And the fact that you're on, like, the same or similar grind as, like, us on stage doing, like you said, you did your first three videos by yourself. You, you, you went through the epidemic sounds, played with it, created thumbnails. Hey, realized, man, this isn't appealing, but I can at least hang my hat on, hey, I did it by myself. Yeah. And then yeah. and then you continue to get better, get evaluated and all that stuff. It's kind of reminiscent of like your grind to go through basketball. Like you I got I got through this way by doing this. I got to a level where, hey, this this sucks. I need to improve. And you continuously improve. I think and that that just may be me, because we do it, but th I feel like that's very commendable. I'm not gonna lie. Because you could you could you could get back by somebody. Like yeah. I appreciate that because it is true though what you're saying like the back like the back end. I um my agent was telling me that these big agencies CAA ICM any athletes that they sign the athletes are expecting like their agents to have like a podcast YouTube division. There's like like those things are being created in these agencies when these like college players are getting drafted and stuff like that. Now they expect to have like a team that's already going to have them set up to to have that stuff ready to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. That's a force. That's, that's, yeah. Some people shouldn't, I'm not going to say no names. Um, Let them do it. What the hell? I, what you doing? Let's spend no, money. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, cause, cause, and I love Trey Young, although I'm not going to say no names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, no, no. Cause we looked at, we looked at his podcast last night when I was streaming and I was just like, I can tell that somebody's making him do this as opposed to, him really wanting to do it. There's so much inconsistency, and I get he has schedules and other stuff like that, but it just looks like somebody's making him do this. And it's interesting to hear you say, like, yo, once you sign with the agency, those are in the talks and maybe in your, like, NBA starter package. Okay, you're going to get a, a shoe deal. You're going to get, I don't know, go to the children's hospital, and then we're going to start a podcast. I've already got Bleacher Report and, and yeah. chick fil oh, that's real. Yeah, that stuff is real. That's I think Paul, I like Paul George's though, because his boy, uh, Jackie, he's been like around the teams when, when Paul was just a rookie, like not in like his boy Jackie is hilarious. But I, I, I really like PG's like podcast. Like, I feel like there is mm -hmm. there's something to it though. Other guys, I feel like just talk, they'll just like reminisce about stories and this expect it to, to push. But like 
They'll include video. They'll include pictures from the time that they, when they're there. They just talk, and I'm just like, nobody just wants to hear you talk. Like, for me, at least when I consume stuff on YouTube, either, like, I consume stuff I like, listen to when I'm driving to go pick my kids up in the car, or I'm just sitting back, and I'll just, like, look at, like, on my watch later list, and I'll just, like, watch everything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, some people I see don't try, you know, but then some people, you know, you know, they just, yeah, they, just some, they, they, they do. We, we like to try him, man. Like, I, I found that clip where Kobe broke your nose, so I, I found that. We can play it anytime. But, yeah, we try around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we try around here. Let me see that. Let me see. Yeah. Hey, 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 man. You sure That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you got it. He should be able to. It's going to be a yeah, great video. Is that down there? Oh, no. Yeah, it's right here. It's right here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yo, Andrew Bynum was tough, bro. Spinning, great. Boom. Oh, That's crazy. That's exactly how he described it. Yeah, damn. <laughs> nice move by Kobe. Walk it off. He did not give a fuck. Oh, this was the third quarter? <laughs> first quarter is crazy. I know you can't smell shit right now. Uh, they had to put a, they had to knock me out, put a rod up my nose, and, 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 and oh. oh, my God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, why you come out the game? Look at Lance. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 too, look at Lance though. Lance, Lance is Lance is so concerned. <laughs> He's like, oh wow. <laughs> Yo, bro. You see your nose? Lance see it from a mile away, bro. Yo, you good game? <laughs> yeah, you, you that was your second foul. I think you fouled uh pow earlier or something like that. I get it a second. <laughs> yeah, that was the second Damn. foul. They said, what the fuck happened to your nose, bro? That oof. He had 33 that night. Learn what happened to Andrew. Third, the damn, you got yeah. I think he had thirty-two, I believe, something like that. Oh, thirty-three. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, oh, my bad. I thought you. I thought he was off of memory. I was he like, yeah, that's crazy. But no, <laughs> hey, I see, I see hey, right that right. last game, Kobe the had got sixty. It oh my god, bro! Like that was. I had never seen somebody like, bro. Like, I had never seen somebody <laughs> check themselves back into the game. He was out the game. He just got up and got back in the game, bro. Every time he caught the ball, he was throwing it to Kobe. Because, like, you know, it's his last game. And, like, the crowd be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Kobe has to do everything. You guys help him out. And I'm just like, I'm going to the crowd. Like, we passing him the ball. We giving up layups for him to run to the corner so he could shoot his last three, bro. I, like, I, it was crazy. After the game, I had never seen so many NBA coaches, like, from the other team in Utah Jazz running down the, the hallway at, at Staples. With their like with shoes and stuff to have Kobe come sign it and everything like that. So I went down the I went to the, the to the to the shop to go buy something, an extra one, because he gave me one of his shoes. I got a shoe, um, not a game worn shoe, but he signed a, a jersey. He signed a shoe for me, one of his shoes, and then I went to go get a jersey. I come back with the jersey, it was a black jersey they were selling, like a limited edition one. And uh I'm seeing like like there was a there was somebody standing at the line at the locker room. I, and I go and I go back to the locker room, dap up the security. I look back and like the dude's a shorter, shorter dude. You're like Kanye West. And Kanye's trying to get in the locker room to go uh see Kobe. And I'm like, yo, so security, you know what it says? You gotta let him in. And he was like, no, we can't let him in until Kobe says it's okay. I'm like, let's try it, Kanye, and everything like that, though, man. But I <laughs> first seen some My bad, My uh, bad, you know, is so like, crazy. All is over Kobe, man. Like just to get in the locker room and everything. Walking hey, shout out to Novashi for the Kanye. five gifted, by the way. That's yeah, shout out Novashi. Walking into a club that Kanye can't get in, gotta be surreal. Be like, yeah, excuse me, Mr. Kanye. The fuck? Hey, hey, like, I, I, I gotta go soon, but I'm gonna tell you this one. I'm gonna tell you this one story about Kobe. Like I said, Kobe never used to like practice, but um, but like he would come to some practices. So we had practice at ten o'clock, and then like the plane would be at like one o'clock or whatever like that. So we get done ten to like say 11 30 practice then you can go get some food send the rookie to go get like you know whatever they want for the plane and then you come back and then you get on the plane it's one o'clock right and uh we haven't taken off yet you know usually they close the doors and like you know i have my headphones on and it gets to like 1 30 and like we still haven't taken off yet and i was like where well, we haven't taken off and it was like yo kobe's not here yet the week before we had left um we left somebody in philadelphia um, because or because uh, I think I forgot the name of the player, but they were late to the plane or something like that. They leave, oh so you get fined. Um, <laughs> what you're saying. You get fined fifteen hundred, and then you have to pay your own flight to get to the city. So uh, 
And then, like, literally, like, we waiting in L.A. to fly out, right? It's like 20, 30, 45 minutes past the time we're supposed to take off. Like, 40 yards down, we all looking out the out the, uh, out the, out, out the, the, the window. A helicopter just, just land and then lands. And then all of a sudden, like, the team security gets in a golf cart and then just drives 40 yards out, picks up Kobe's bags, and then puts them on the um, – Puts them on the back and then drives back. Kobe, forty minutes late. We come. We we um. He gets on the plane. We all start clapping. Sacre starts clapping and everything like that. And, and Kobe looks at us like, "Why the fuck y'all clapping for? Y'all mad at me because I'm late? Man, my jersey sales like you know paid for all y'all's contracts." <laughs> oh my, oh yeah. my god, <laughs> bro! Like, bro, like people people say that like I said, I'm just like that's just being man, like you know, like unwavering, like you know, confidence in himself, like bro, like. You know, you can't, you know, I don't know, man. You know, he was different, man. God, Damn God it, rest his soul, man. He was. <laughs> he wasn't lying. Rob was definitely being paid by Kobe Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to be honest, we're going to talk. Yeah. Um, that's, that's crazy. Before you. Well, was it Ryan Kelly who was late? This is crazy. Uh, this. <laughs> Andrew Goodwin? No, you were 16. Was Xavier? Oh, it was Tyree Black? No. Was it Tari? Oh, was it Marcelo? Tariq, Tariq, Tariq Black. Oh, Tariq? my Lord. Was it Marcelo Hortes? Y'all are really trying to get this name up out of him. This is disgusting. <laughs> Listen, oh, Nick Young. It was there. It was Nick Young. That's what it was. It was Nick Young. I had to look on the roster. I was like, oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's, that's who it is. That's who it is. But um, before... it might be, it might be Lou. Before before we get up out of here, before we get you up out of here, quick quickest quickest of quick hitters, single favorite NBA moment. What's that one? We'll go, we'll go with that. We'll go with that one first. Single greatest moment of your time in the in the league. I will say this though: we're gonna circle back a little bit. Score my first basket in the NBA, like that was legit. Like you know, I, I remember the move. I was on, I was playing the Detroit Pit against the Detroit Pistons. I spun baseline and uh, one dribble, like dunk on the other side of the rim. So I was like something like, you'll never forget your first basket in the NBA. That's why I was just like, get my first, like get that ball. Give me that ball. Give me that ball. Give me that ball, though. I thought you going to remember your first your first bucket in the game is from a, a, a free throw and a miss. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and last, 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 last question. <sighs> Anybody from your NBA past that you would love to see on a podcast? Oh. You oh, want to no. hear their stories? They're funny. Maybe a specific podcast. I don't know. So I always oh, tell this story. He had the podcast right now. But uh, when I was growing up, I used to love Tim Duncan and KG. Those two guys had the great post work. In the, in, in, good, like, bro, I want to have feet, footwork like them. So I got a chance to meet. Eventually, I got a chance to hang out with Kate, uh, uh, Tim Duncan. I went to San I, mean, I went to uh, San Antonio, worked out with them and everything like that. I met him when I was a kid, uh, and when he, when the, the uh, All Star game was in DC in two thousand. So it was good to meet your idol. I felt always great about that. But my rookie year in the NBA, uh, we about to play the Celtics, and the Celtics, I think, I think they won the championship in 08, I believe, or oh seven or eight. I think oh seven was oh, yeah. Dallas. Bro, the first game, first game, I go up to KG, put my hand out, and I was like, yo, KG, I'm a big fan, big fan of yours. He looks me up and down, was like, shut the fuck up, you cupcake bitch. And then I was like, oh shit. So ever since then, bro, I was like, I I I can't. Oh so every time I used to play against them, bro, I used to I used to come. I used to take my thumb, I guard guard in the post like this, one bent arm. And one arm right here, I would take my finger and jam it right in between his ribs. So he would go like this, <laughs> and he would offensive foul. This is a fuck with me. And then, like, uh, I was on oh my, my last year in the NBA, I was on three teams in one year. And I knew I had to, like, lay, like I, it was time to, like, you know, close that chapter. And I was on I was on Hornets, the Bucks, and I was on the Bucks. I was there for, like, three weeks before they traded me to Denver. And, um, and uh, KG actually had came – to work with, I think Giannis, and uh, he came to work. What's it? Who's a black dude? A black kid, African. There's like three of them. Um, the, the Moody, 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 Moody,
What? Thon Maker. Thon Maker. Thon Maker. Okay, they brought KG in to work with Thon Maker. And like, so like, I wasn't playing. I was working out. And uh, the team, you know, I wasn't playing. And I saw KG on the court. And he, I'm, he we always have beef when we play. And it seemed like something's going to, like, you know, something's going to go. Bro, he's the nicest dude ever, though, bro. Like, so nice off the court, bro. I'm like, yo, I would love to sit down and talk to him and just, like, hear his stories. I know he has stories that he tells at Paul Pierce and everything like that. But, like, for me, it was just, like, going from hating the dude and then, you know, who was your idol to, like, actually talking to him and be like, he's a totally different person, like, off the court than he is on. I was like, man, I like to pick his brain. I take take him out to dinner, you know, and everything like that. Now, how do we facilitate the KG Roy pod? Hmm. That's what I want to know. Yeah, anyway, there was a platform where Kevin Garnett and Roy Ebert could, I don't know, link and build, right? That's what, what I'm say. saying. And, and, and keep it real, right? Keep it a thousand. You know, link yeah. and build. Yeah. Um, listen, you will. friend of the show, Roy Ebert, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah, hey, let me know if y'all want me back anytime. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, you know Gee, if y'all, if y'all have any guests, let me know. <laughs> What you doing Monday? No, well, I'm say, hey, <laughs> let me know. Let us know anytime. <laughs> when you feel like talking again. Hey, I'm not, I'm so let me know. I'll come back every now and then. You let me know. I, I can be a regular, you know, uh, semi-regular guest from time to time and everything like that. You know, if if you if 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 your uh your, your crowd appreciates it there, you know, or or or, or fucks with I think you or anything like that. You know? Now the next episode like... is only Star Wars. I'm not gonna lie. That's all we're talking about. All right, about cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Kane and Jarvis, right here. Yeah, you know? oh my god. I got the uh, oh. Lo, take a look at this because I need. Do you hear them when they hit the ground? Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, so I hear them, bro. Happy. You should go to uh, Dream so Con next year, Roy. Oh, oh those are so yeah, cool. Yeah. Damn. Roy, <laughs> What do you do with the blades? What do you do with the blades? Where are the blades at? Oh, uh, so I only have the uh, the Disney ones. I haven't got like the the mm -hmm. other art favors or anything like that. You know, they're not as nice, you know, as, as the, the profi ones that you guys you have and everything. You know, so. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Roy here. One more time. Yes, sir, Roy. <laughs> Appreciate you, my guy. Appreciate you. Appreciate the hell out of you, bro. You gotta get up out of here. Give with y'all the best. Happy holidays and everything like that. We'll have a good 2024. Thanks. Me too, man. This was a bucket list thing for me, so. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, yeah, no. We expect that, to see you a lot in 2024. All right, for sure. Let me know. Be so let me know. Hey, I'll okay. text you my, uh, I'll DM you my uh, my number. You can just text me from here on out. I appreciate your love, too, man. Helping me up with the with the resources, though, you know what I'm saying. For uh, sure. If you, if you need any more help, let me know. Let me know. I'm gonna pick your brain, though. I'm gonna pick your brain. Hey, y'all, take it easy, though. Thanks All again. Right, peace out, man. Peace out, bro. You too. Whew. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh Roy my Thursdays, God. Roy Ebert Thursdays. Only let's keep it a buck. Fuck Pat McAfee. Fuck Aaron Rodgers. We found out Aaron Rodgers. We found out. <laughs> Yo, this <laughs> is crazy. Oh my God, we, we did it. We had a meeting. Oh my God, he's an all star. Ah! Now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something crazy. You're not in trouble. <laughs> Oh shit, I yeah. can't scream, I can't scream, I can't scream. Right. Yeah, PC got Shaq, we got Roy. No, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. Oh, okay. yeah. Um Did y'all ask the real questions though? I'm, I'm I might have missed it. Oh uh, yeah. Gay son thought daughter. Did y'all did y'all ask him, hey, why did he disrespect Tim Duncan? Because on that list that was ridiculous. And then the end it saying that oh, Tim I Duncan was one of his favorite players is kind of crazy. Damn, so just vibing, man. You're the one that reacted to the list. I ain't see that list. Why ain't you watching? Yeah, why are you? I, I thought, thought y'all might have already asked him. I didn't want to. No, man. No question. You came up here. It was his preference. Yeah, you came here to hate, dog. Like, I'm saying. Nah, I'm finna. What's the most dicey question we asked? I'm finna, I'm finna disrespect you. I ain't gonna lie. Because you ain't never had it. What is the most dicey question y'all asked? We asked him, can we say his name since he's not here? Ooh, the David Lee story. I don't give a fuck. Nah, the David no. Lee. Story, oh my! I, I that was funny. Oh no! Then I th well, he was starting you to get. Did y'all remember that fight though? I ain't gonna lie. Nah, no, we I, didn't want to. He he he. 
you know, our, 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 our guy Roy talked to us. So you know, I, 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 yeah. I remember when they were both pushing each other, and then even yeah. Matt Barnes, I think, and Curry start pushing Roy Hibbert too. And I was like, Nah, oh. he did say he he did say a camera crew got some uh, exclusive footage of Nick Young and D'Lo. He did a little. Oh no, I saw that. I saw. I was there for that. I was there for that. That was crazy. I forgot that that happened. Then yeah, the Stephen Jackson thing too. The Stephen Jackson I, shit after the malice, he brought up the Stephen Jackson. I forgot oh, yeah. that that shit happened he too. One, one bullet, two arms. That's oh, yeah. Crazy. oh yeah, we got clips for days from this one. This is a uh... hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, We're paid. Yeah, he doesn't have a problem with non Hoopers talking ball. I did hear that too. Yeah. But all right, man, y'all didn't really ask the real question. Oh, where's man. the where's the gay son thought? Oh, gay son thought daughter. Gay son. Hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you make, when you say that, you make it seem like there's something wrong with a gay son. What about a thought daughter, though? What's wrong with that? There's something wrong. Nothing wrong with a gay son. Everything wrong with a thought daughter. I feel you. Nothing well, let me ask you. If you give if you give Paul George six inches, what is he? A porn star? I don't know. This is crazy. <laughs> the answer was Wendy. <laughs> We were looking for that? Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> Victor Wembanyama. Is that crazy? Bro? Is that crazy? Freak of Mink. God damn. No, nah, get, get your head out of the game. Yes, man. God damn. Porn star? Will be goofy ass. That would that would only that would only make him seven two though. Victor Wembanyama is taller than seven two though. He would still be like Victor. Yeah. Oh, would you guy. would you go downstairs if you I like were in the my house? With, I like my answers. Though. Would you go downstairs if Nicki Minaj was downstairs? Oh no, I didn't want to go. I I, I it's a lot of stuff that happened last night, but I didn't I didn't want to go. No. So you no, she would she would have got jealous. About what? Nah, she would have got jealous. Yeah. No, she Minaj. wanted me to go. Oh, why you didn't go there? Because this is a lot. I'll just tell you later. On. We, um, gotta, we gotta get you and her on the pod, man. That's a fact. Um, Talk Lakers, you know. We can say her name. We can say her name, right? Well, I'm about to get out of here. Why can't we say her name? Why can't we say her name? I hope y'all ask the real question, though. I did ask. I hope y'all ask Are you nervous? You can watch the pod tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'll just watch it tomorrow, man. Hmm. I'm happy. I'm happy. I always call it. Also, I'm happy I found that Kobe clip. Isn't she in the yeah, chat? Yo, yo, he talked about welcome. that shit dumb early. He talked about that shit dumb early. Y'all are, y'all are Is, welcome. I found that clip. Isn't she in the chat? Oh, okay, goddamn. All right, man. I can't tell Also, I am I am Nick, I am Nick Fury. Oh, come on. There's no way Nick, Nick Fury, the one that like assembles everybody. Beast Souls, B Souls is, so is B Souls is more He's either Captain, Captain America or um Cap. I don't see Cap. I really want to be Black Panther. Omar Stark. <gasps> and I could have did no, that. Omar, Omar, Omar Stark's and you're you're Cap. Wait, so who's the Cap? Why can't you're, I be you're, Black you're Panther? Incredible, you're Incredible Hulk. A sage being Black Panther is kind of tough. No yeah! No, 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 I was scared. No, no. I thought this nigga was going to give me the arrow. I was like, oh, man. First of all, I, I thought you was going to get Thor. I, I thought you was going to be corny. This is corny, bro. I have a Black Panther mask. Because he got a hammer? Hey, yo. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, what? How do you? You had to. Yo, that's. you. Nigga had to say some yo shit in this podcast. It can't be a podcast man, if no gay shit have. Wait, wait, wait. So why I got a Black Panther mask though? Why Sage get to be? I should have pulled that out. Fuck the shield. Damn. Well, Who, I did come from. Well, you want to? You want to be white? I don't keep it a buck. Oh, oh god. Y'all oh, oh, think I'm Mister Collab in the NBA streets for like compared to everyone? I thought you were talking about just here. No, nah, I'm talking about NBA YouTube. Yeah, he thinks he's the. He thinks you he's think the, you the, think you the, you the you NBA think. Sphere. You think you've made more connections in the NBA YouTube space than me? Not necessarily more. Just brought everyone okay, together. That's what I you know what I'm you saying? You wasn't here though. You're not a part oh, of this. Fuck. You're not. This hold on, crazy. hold on. I got you, Bezos. Let's let. Like, no, 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 no. It's not no, about no, connections. No, no. What you you're not a. You're, but you're not a part of. Let's keep it about each other. Did you connect the connections though? Like that's what I'm saying. You're not one. You're not one for for real. Well, I, I, Nick Nick Fury, what he does is all behind the scenes. Stuff. But you're not like, one so fourth though, right? Uh, matter of fact, you're right. You behind the scenes. You behind the scenes. You right. <laughs> you behind the scenes. Nah, niggas is lame petty, ass niggas. <laughs> oh, niggas is petty, yeah, bro. yeah. Behind the scenes. <laughs> the way that Nick Fury works is that he th it makes it seem like y'all are doing it, but it's really Nick Fury connecting the dots. I'm about to get furious. So yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. 
Yeah, it's so nasty, Nick, man. Nick mad real soon. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you who you're going to be working with next. If y'all really want me to. I, mean, I, can, I can tell y'all. Who, who? We already got it. We already got it locked in. I mean, let's just think about it. How, how y'all think that one got on PC? What? what? Is Shaq supposed to be coming on? Is that what you're saying? No, no. I'm saying why y'all think he got on PC, man. Who, who you think? I, I know PC? why. They... Let me not. Let me I not. know exactly how I got on yeah, PC. Yeah, I, I, I think we all know why. They yeah, said you're Doctor you think, Strange. You think you Doctor Strange is crazy? Oh my God. <laughs> you you think you think you know why? Oh, it's a hidden truth. So you you, you, you laid it. You a hidden truth, truth all along. I oh no! Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, who, who who who? How do you think they know y'all? Bro? Come on now. Come on now. Do you think they know y'all? They respect I, ball I talk. I guess. Come on, you know they knew us before we even before you had anything to do with it. We, is that a lighter? That's not, that's not, that's not, that's actually, not true. I got Dumbo on player choice. I got on player choice before you had anything in the involvement at all. Yes, Dumbo, they were asking me about y'all well before that. Probably when, 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 because I do when remember the earliest instance that they mentioned our name. Thank you. And it was yeah. a long time ago. It was a long time ago. This is way before you got on, Dumbo. No, I'm talking about you. When, when, when did, did you? you yeah, when did you get on? When did I get on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yo, he's lying, chat. He's by. No, I'm, I'm actually. I know. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to their page and make sure I have the right time frame. I'm not. I'm not going to the right I'm I'm Nick Fury. I, so, I, I can I just have it? Be so. You're you're my Nick Fury. You think I'm, I'm a, a let... fucking human? I can't even be the human dude. Like, damn. <laughs> you think I'm gonna let this non one fourth ass nigga tell you that you're not Nick Fury? And I don't even know. Why are we prolonging this podcast? I'm not listening to love. We're not finna sit here and have him take over our shit because he think he's somebody. He not. Uh-huh, because uh, I, I am about I am about to go, but let me yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I'll, 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 dead ass, I'll put you on punishment. Keep playing with me. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Punishment is crazy. <laughs> Sage. Punishment. <laughs> 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 I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna say like almost like two years ago, Donald. Let it rock. Let it rock. <laughs> I, I wanna say I was on there. I'm like, years ago. Oh, hey. I, I would need to know I, <laughs> I would need to know because there was a clip of Shaq. When he was still doing a podcast talking about who let uh let's keep it a buck or a pick a side podcast be the authority on like yeah what, your what word is, is law is well I remember that. This, is before that. this is I'm I'm I looking at right now is, in twenty in twenty twenty one that's when I that's that I was I was on there since back in twenty twenty one that's when I first got on there was in twenty twenty one yeah but you and also you're not cool you're not cool like i don't even know why for real for real. um listen we about to get up I, I out of here later, man yeah y'all did, y'all did, good job man i did a great job we know we did <laughs> who's your nba friend of the show who's your nba friend of the show of this show or just in general of of your show oh my show about to be gilbert arenas it's about mm-hmm. to be oh well we about to be doing well, well and last la- during the summer it was kd yeah, he's not. He's, he's not uh, your regular. I that was the antagonist. I don't, uh, yeah. I don't know if that was your friend, game. Literally, he came up. Better start in five. Who, who far? Who far gonna be better? Ours. <laughs> I, mean, I got <laughs> KB and Gil. Stop playing with me. You don't have Gil. <laughs> Nothing. Y'all can't, y'all can't score. score. So you can DM KD right now. You could DM him technically, yeah. You yeah. wouldn't answer. You could get a response from KD right now. I think I no, could DM him. Let me ask you. I mean, honestly, I probably could within twenty four hours. I probably could get it. No, you couldn't. Bro. Get one. Get one. Get one. Oh, and yeah. shit. What are you gonna be asking? Huh? What's up, big bro? Let's keep it real. What's up, big bro? Yeah, back. I, mean, I, I don't. I don't have. I don't have <laughs> nothing to ask. Nick Fury. Come on, Nick Fury. So make yeah, the Nick Fury. Nick, just be a fifth. Oh, oh, y'all, y'all. Oh, so now y'all want me to make be a fifth. Twenty four hours, you know. I'll be Shang Chi. <laughs> yo, yo, that's the new challenge. Fifth calls. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I do this podcast lo- called "Let's Keep It a Buck." <laughs> trying to see. Me. Hey, I'm just, I'm just trying to make like connections, that. man. But I, I, hey, I'll see y'all on playback. Play Why back can't we team. both be Nick Fury? I see. I, there's only one Nick Fury. Multi. Sorry, two is crazy. Multiverse is crazy. Ah. But I will see y'all playback. Um, playback TV, man. I mean, I wonder how that came about. But I see y'all there, man. I see y'all there, man. Make make my more connections. <laughs> okay, brother. Um, how, how, how did y'all? You never mind, never mind, never mind. How did you even get your name? Remember, I named you. No, you didn't. <laughs> and I'm running with that narrative, right? Yeah. And don't think you getting put back up on the stage. Did you um, make his tape? Does anybody... That's what I'm saying. I made him. Period. <laughs> Full stop. His name wasn't even Marcel before I came around. Like, type shit. Called him son. What was it? 
It was sun. It was just sun. <laughs> yes. I swear. <laughs> our mom, our mom, right, let's go, let's go. Let's our mom and dad called this nigga son, bro. They called him son. Um, is anybody streaming after this? Uh, not tonight. Shit. Tomorrow. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I think I'm streaming tomorrow. Oh, I'm fuck yeah. early stream guy, man. I'm back to two thirty guy, man. Yeah, you got a raid. If you was asking for the raid, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm back to I'm back to two thirty PM guy for a minute, man. It's a two thirty yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, you shook off for the chunk. Damn. Just give me just for a minute, man. I just, I just think there's a difference Lay between streaming two. late and screaming suck a cock at two three p three a.m. I think there's a happy medium. Yeah, I, I, I just I, I just agree with you. Know, I, mean, I just I just shifted my shit for a quick second. That's all. Nah, yeah, pause. somebody will add it. Some pause. Somebody Wait, Omar, are, are you are time. you streaming after this? Yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Let's somebody, somebody gotta take the raid. The fuck? I gotta get my days in. They What's it called? Um, is your is your Honestly, I have is, an idea, but what? is your is your thing? Um, is your never mind. Fuck it, fuck it. We'll talk about that later. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you guys tomorrow on Playback TV when we have other friends of the show. Hey, hold on now. Hype shit. The guest Nick Fury time. is working. We will Hype have. Shit. The Deep Three podcast in the building, and I've got some questions. That was too long. My bad, y'all. How the fuck do y'all make y'all shorts work? Frame one. Now, so I ain't gonna lie to you, and, and that's why you got that noise complaint. Long ass. <laughs> that shit is crazy, bro. I cannot believe it. But, um, yeah, we will I be back tomorrow. I think the second really was the, the line. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, what, time, what time of night was it? Like two? Oh, yeah. We was up till like four. <laughs> and it's Hell, three four. nah. So and it's stream at four. He I said, felt like I was in college again, man. Yeah. You was having fun? Than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got beef with y'all. Fuck both of y'all, matter of fact. Bo both? Yeah. First of all, I ain't gonna lie. I'm yes. throwing this one under the bus. I'm throwing him under the bus. He invited me. I said yes to the party. It's SNS night. Yeah, it's I said, SNS I said night. Yes what the fuck? But, what, but, but why can't I just play Fortnite? At least one game. Oh, I'll play Fortnite with us. We're going to be playing Fortnite at around We're this time. We're talking about Jonathan Majors. No, I wasn't. No, I, but that doesn't matter. Honestly, even if I was talking about peace in the Middle East, it should not matter. I was up. Yeah, and then y'all see me up. We were up together on stream. Nah, that would be different. How did Fortnite happen? We so was locked in on you, the fucking stream. So we were playing 2K. We were playing nah. 2K. Then none of my games were installed, and he didn't have WWE. So, yeah. but Souls' internet was dumb quick. So we played WWE while we were mentioning Fortnite and Minecraft. I think Sweep literally just joined. So I think at that point, we weren't even like looking for a four. And then we had Moses as a five. So I think motherfuckers just wasn't on the phone. Now, Everything else, I ain't gonna really. I could really throw souls on the bus, but chill. Not so much on SNS night. Not so much on SNS night. Not so much on SNS night. Before we get up on get out of here, uh, I do want to shout out Novashi for another five gifted. Yeah, I, I want to. I want to do a little roll call real quick, man. Shout out to Novashi for the five gifted. Shout out to uh, Immaculate for the sub. Uh, Saiyan for the resub. Mando for the resub. Kevin Sear for the resub. Monty for the resub. Metacomp. JBG. Uh, Vader, Straw, Straw the Hat, MDG, uh, Kill, Klee, oh my god, y'all names, Heat Culture, PX, Pistol, Playway Steph, Pistol with like two more gifted, Quinn, Pistol with more gifted, Yuzu, Pistol again, yo, Pistol went crazy, I, I ain't even seen this, Prototype was in the building, MDG was in the building, a Happy Camper, Black Doflamingo, gifted a couple as well, Skilly, J-Rod, and definitely missed a couple, but yo, shout out to everyone that gifted today, man. It's a big night, so shout out to y'all, man. Jack, you know the vibes whenever we have one of them ones, man. Rank the rank the pod, man. Is this gonna be pod of the year? I know it's a late bloomer, but I think I think we got a contender for yeah, sure. This is a good pod. Got the Legion for another gifted. Um, so who's streaming? Who's streaming? I am. I am. I'm about to start my stream in a second. Um, be so sick about it, the people, man. Peace out, y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming through, man. Let me let me get a close up, mate. Appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. <laughs> Double it. sink about it to people. All right, Chaz, we're my favorite man. I slack, and we will be back. Shit, hopefully we're Roy again, man. I can't. That's so good. Is anyone come yeah, back? Yeah, that is me. You're still legend. Say whatever you want, man. Like, hey, I'm y'all, Aaron Rodgers. Time shit. Mama hey, made it. Mama man. made it. Uh, Sage, think about it to people. All right, people, man. Uh, 2023 is becoming a fantastic fucking year. Now nah, I'm really like sitting back thinking about it. 2023 is a great fucking year. Hope it was a great year for everybody watching. Uh, the TSO Twitch channel nine times out of ten is not going live tonight. 
Uh, if I do, it's just going to be a weeb stream. Hopefully, the weebs can hit the sub goal, but it won't be until midnight at earliest. Probably not until tomorrow. Take care. Stay blessed. We're going to see you next time. But uh, I ain't going to lie, man. We might just have another NBA player on this bitch. <laughs> so it is what it is. Subscribe to the channel, man. Um, And with that being said, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.